Hey, Bellator Nation, follow us across a large array of digital platforms and stay up to date on everything you need to know. Like us on the Bellator Facebook page and see exclusive videos. Follow us and get instant updates on Twitter at Bellator MMA and get a chance to have your tweet live on the broadcast. See amazing pictures on Instagram at Bellator MMA. Join Bellator Nation today. From the gym to the streets, Bellator fans head to bellatorshop.com and gear up in the same apparel the fighters wear. Tonight, a pair of homecomings in the Bellator cage. For one fighter, it is a return to his town. We out. And for the other, a return to his crown. I can go on and I bring the belt home. AJ McKee comes home as a former champion, embarking on a nascent chapter in a new weight division. After vanquishing Patricio Pitbull, the new Bellator MMA featherweight champion. The reign was short-lived when McKee lost the featherweight title in the rematch. He is the three-time Bellator featherweight world champion, Pitbull. As a proud owner of the longest winning streak in the history of the promotion, he now looks to begin a new streak at lightweight. Yeah, I'm going to be bigger. I'm definitely going to be stronger, and I'm coming back better. Versus the surging Spike Carlisle. Never count Spike Carlisle out. Patricio Pitbull has reclaimed the belt and begins his unprecedented third reign as 145-pound champion. He also rules as Bellator's pound-for-pound -pound top dog. I have all the records. Nobody can reach me. A defender of the throne must face the top challengers to his domain. The hard-charging Hungarian Adam Boric is poised to make his own history. The subplot of tonight's co-features is a simmering rivalry between Pitbull and McKee. While both must take care of their respective business at hand, each will have an eye on his nemesis with anticipation of unfinished business. For now, winning and not overlooking the upset-minded opposition is the immediate task for these two stars. Danger always lurks in the cage because Bellator MMA is where warriors come to fight for fame and fortune. Front Jam featuring 11 miles of sandy shoreline. Tonight, the Long Beach Arena here in the aquatic capital of America houses the deepest end of the Bellator MMA talent pool. Patricio Pitbull Freire improved to 6-0 in rematches when he defeated AJ McKee to become the promotion's only four-time champion. McKee shares tonight's marquee as he looks to bounce back from his first L in front of loved ones here in his hometown of LBC in his lightweight debut. Meanwhile, Pitbull begins his record third reign at 145 against Adam Boric. Hello, I'm Mauro Ranallo, and yeah, I know I sound like a broken record when it comes to chronicling Patricio Pitbull Friday's astounding accomplishments in the Bellator cage. But that's because the Brazilian legend continues to break records. He told us that even after all that he's accomplished, he's continually motivated to challenge himself, to overcome his boundaries, and to wait for it, set even more records. It's all about his family, his kids, Miguel and Davi, his wife, Therese, and yes, his brother, lightweight champ, Patricky, is here, and together they comprise the first concurrent brother champs in major MMA history. Speaking of history, the fighting pride of Hungary, Adam Boric seeks 
to become his country's first MMA world champion. He had a dream when he was 16 that he was going to become Hungary's biggest MMA star. Fast forward 13 years and that dream has become a reality. Tonight, he enters the cage with the weight of a nation on his shoulders. He told us that he's not just fighting for himself, he's fighting for his flag. And joining me, Big John McCarthy. Now, Borg shares the hometown, the same hometown with Olympic gold medalist times two in water polo, Norbert Madadas. And you might not know this, but Mr. McCarthy here, he attended Long Beach State University where he was a water polo standout as well. Inquiring minds want to know, where's your gold medal? sitting in his bookcase in, <laughs> in Hungary. All right, well, Boric, he challenges the gold standard in Bellator MMA. Give us the BJM breakdown. Look, when you're taking a look at Patricio Pitbull, it is obvious he is an amazing fighter. And people are going to talk about his power, like his big right hand or his left hook. But it is more than that. He's got an amazing guillotine that if he clamps it on, he is on you and you're gonna get finished. We've seen it so many times. But if you're gonna ask me what makes this guy special, it's his intelligence. It's his fight IQ. This guy has faced off against amazing people and always comes up with a way to win. But against Adam Borch, you're looking at a guy super fast, very big, super strong, and explosive, Moro, in a way that you just don't see. He is willing to do things like flying knees at any moment. He's got a great jab. He's got amazing kicks. He'll do inside elbows that are unbelievable. This guy is the real deal. And Pitbull better be careful. This is the guy that can take his title. With more on the Bellator 286 main event, let's go to the fight desk. Here's Amanda Guetta. Moro, Big John, a very good evening to you. Yes, Amanda Guerra, along with two-time world champ Josh Thompson here on the fight desk. We'll be with you all night having a good time. Josh, let's talk about our main event we do have coming up tonight. The best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in Bellator, the featherweight champ Patricio Pitbull, putting his belt on the line against Adam Boric. Josh, these two share a birthday. It is July 7th. But they call Adam Borch the kid. He says, I'm going to use that youth tonight. It is on my side. How much of a chance does he have to take away the belt from the champ? Oh, he's definitely got a chance. Like Big John said, he has all the attributes to become champion. He's fast. He's long. He's lanky. He does all. He has all the skills in the toolbox to beat Patricio tonight. Let's talk about the co-main event, the return, the true homecoming of A.J. McKee, the former featherweight champ, fighting for the first time at lightweight, going up against Spike Carlisle. Josh, um, there is so much on A.J. McKee's shoulders coming in tonight. He's coming off the first loss of his career. He's going up to lightweight there. And not only that, look at him. He looks happy. He looks good walking into this arena here. He has fought all over the world, but he is from Long Beach. He said, I dreamt of fighting here as a kid. What's his mentality, though, with all of that on his shoulders coming into tonight? I want to know what his mentality is wearing that jacket. That's what I want to okay, know. Okay, don't be I, jealous because you I can't pull that off. I couldn't pull that off. There's yeah, no but way. AJ can. He makes it look good. Look, you're here in Long Beach. You <laughs> do what you want, man. This is your city. So, look, overall, AJ has all the attributes like Adam Boric does. He's got the speed. He's got the power. He's got the grappling, the wrestling. He comes from a pedigree. His dad was a fighter and was a really, really good fighter. So he was born and bred to be who he is today. Now, the pressure that he's going to feel fighting in Long Beach is something he's never felt before. Having all those tools is one thing, but the next thing is getting it done in your hometown. We're going to hear from him talking about the Long Beach lifestyle. I learned a lot. I learned a lot from AJ McKee this week. Also tonight, Aaron Pico going up against Jeremy Kitty. This fight is going to be incredible. This is a fight that has been scheduled multiple times. It was canceled for various reasons. Jeremy Kennedy told us this week, he goes, I am tired of thinking about Aaron Pico and preparing for Aaron Pico. So it's finally paying off tonight. Tonight. And if Aaron Pico wins this fight, though, there's a chance he could be facing the winner of Patricio Pitbull and Adam Boric. Either one, whoever wins, Josh, how much of a message is that going to send to the rest of this division? Kennedy might have a claim as well if he beats Aaron Pico that he could potentially be next in line for a title shot. But look, let's get to the point. They're both here. They both made weight. They're both here to step in the cage tonight and put on a show. It is going to be absolutely incredible. This is one of the best cards we have seen all year. For now, we'll send it back down to Moro to kick things off, Moro. All right, Amanda, thank you very much. Bellator MMA honors Hispanic Heritage Month by bringing you a matchup between former Bantamweight belt holder Juan Archuleta, who has Spanish-Mexican roots, and Peru's Enrique Barzola, 
This fight will be contested at a contract weight of 141. And now, ready to make his way to the cage, Enrique El Fuente Barzola. The pride of Peru, Enrique Barzola believes in his physical preparation, his cardio, and his aggressiveness. He was doing very well against his opponent, Magomed Magomedov, in the bantamweight world grand prix. One mistake was all it took for Magomedov to clinch the guillotine choke, the first submission loss of Enrique Barzola's career, the first time he has been finished in what going into tonight is his 27th professional fight. That's because this guy is what we call a dog. This is a guy that will go into the cage and break you. The problem for him is he's got a guy that is very much like him that he's gonna face, but Enrique Barzola, he's got a great gas tank. He is tough as nails, and he just keeps coming. And now, his opponent, the Spaniard, Juan Archuleta. Juan Archuleta wearing his trademark Spanish conquistador helmet. And hey, I, I looked it up. The dictionary definition of conquistador is a conqueror, especially one of the Spanish conquerors of Mexico and Peru in the 16th century. And John, here we are, five centuries later, Archuleta's opponent, Peru's Barzola, attempting to avenge his ancestors, while Archuleta attempts to end the first losing streak of his career. He's coming off his first knockout loss against Rafael Stotts in the Grand Prix, a fight in which he was winning until he got stopped. Only you could bring 500 history, years of history into an MMA fight. <laughs> <laughs> it's called preparation. MMA's not been here that long. That's great. Look at Juan Archuleta is a goer, man. I love this guy. He will come in. He will use all the tools. He's a great wrestler, but he does not mind disengaging to land the shot. These guys match up so well. This is going to be fantastic. With the tail of the tape, we are going to, again, look at this matchup. Really, on paper, it is a pick -em according to the odds makers. Here you see why. Absolutely. At 25 and 4, Juan Archuleta has fought some of the very best. Barzola, like I said, he breaks people. We'll see if he can do that against Archuleta. I doubt it. With the official introductions, here is the international voice of Bellator MMA, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Bellator MMA. Tonight, live on Showtime from Long Beach, California, we extend a special welcome to the brave men and women serving around the world and joining us tonight on AFN, the American Forces Network. Here at Bellator 286, inside Long Beach Arena, we begin at 141 pounds, set for three five-minute rounds, introducing the blue corner. At five foot seven, weighing in 137.4 pounds, his professional record, 18 wins, six losses, two draws, from Lima, Peru, please welcome Enrique El Fuente Barzola. And across the cage, his adversary, hiding out of the red corner, at five foot seven, weighing in 141 pounds even, the former Bellator Bantamweight World Champion brings 25 professional victories, four defeats, fighting out of Hesperia, California, introducing Juan the Spaniard at And the referee in charge of the action, Jonathan Romero. Juan Archuleta is hoping for a firefight. He says Barzola will be stopped in the third round. 
Meanwhile, Barzola up 3-2-1 right, 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 since he left the featherweight right. division in March right, 2019. Right. He wants to make this a dogfight. Both of them are known for bringing the pressure, and immediately Archuleta goes on the attack, landing a one-two combination. Beautiful right hand by Archuleta, landing there cleanly. And Archuleta already looking for the takedown. Barzola defending it well. And, and John, when you talk about wrestling, South America not exactly known for its wrestling. Barzola black belt in Luta Libre, no gi submission wrestling. But when it comes to his wrestling acumen, this guy can be a takedown machine. He can because of where he decided to go train at. He's been training at AKA for a long time. Oh, he's getting lit he's up He's getting tattooed. He's getting lit up in the LBC by Archuleta early. And Archuleta, who turned 35 last month, knows that he's at a crossroads. His first losing streak, back-to-back -back losses in title fights against Dots and Pettis, but he is looking to make Barzola pay for his recent misery. He is looking to make Barzola pay, and right now he's doing it, and he's he's doing what his footwork is doing for him right now. He's beautiful. He is taking outstanding angles, creating those angles and landing wow. clean shots. Hi. Accuracy here for Archuleta landing that three-punch combination and really just throwing everything at Barzola. Barzola now with a single collar tie trying to feed Archuleta with a steady diet of right uppercuts. That's Barzola's style, man, and he's going to try to break you down, get you shots. Very nice wrestling with Archuleta. Archuleta takes Barzola's back here. In round one, so John Archuleta promised the fastest start of his career. Coming off his first knockout loss, he's looking to shake it off swiftly. Boy, he is, but you know, you take a look at that loss, man. He looked so good in that fight. It was the best I'd ever seen him look. He just got hit with something he didn't see. And Barzola equally up to the task against Magomedov, and then making the mistake and being submitted. So both of them coming off dubious firsts in their career, but both of them knowing that a win here tonight keeps them right in the thick of things. In fact, there's been talk, should there be an injury the rest of the way in the Grand Prix, the victor of this fight could be a replacement. Absolutely, and you take a look at, you could basically be inserting yourself right back into a million dollar payday. This fight means a ton. And a fantastic start by Juan Archuleta. Utilizing angles, John, some good footwork, and coming in and landing and escaping before Barzola can return fire. Now, Barzola's had some success with the single collar tie and the right uppercuts, but he's got he's to close the gap and try to stay in that pocket with yeah, Archuleta. Yeah, the, te the technical boxing has been a Juan Archuleta. The dirty boxing has been Barzola, no doubt. But Juan Archuleta right now is using beautiful... Oh, that low kick and then the right hand tags Barzola right on the nose and a straight right hand. Archuleta's very loose, very fluid in his striking and with each and every second it appears his confidence is growing. He is feeling, he's feeling that flow right now. Right now he's got Barzola confused and it's that movement right there. Wow. Beautiful left hook. Just tattooing. Barzola with the right and the left hook, and again, darts in, lands the combination, darts out. Now Barzola coming forward, knowing that he's got to try to find a way to get back into this fight in the striking department, changes levels, and Archuleta defending that takedown attempt momentarily, but Barzola gets it! He gets it, and you're talking about a guy who's wrestled his entire life and won Archuleta, his entire family were wrestlers. Barzola getting the takedown here. Archuleta needs to figure out what he wants to do to protect himself, but also get back to his feet. One nice movement. North-south position now when Barzola was in the UFC, went 6-3-1, and one, but secured 42 takedowns during that time. It's amazing from a guy that came, and, never wrestled in school at all. And looking to take the back of Archuleta. Archuleta defending well with the hand fighting, trying to defend the potential rear naked choke attempt by Barzola. But Archuleta back to his feet, but looking for the return of the mat is Barzola. Nice job by Barzola. He's got his hands continuing there. He's looking for the switch by Archuleta. Yeah, looking for that sit-out switch, but well worked here by Barzola, and the pace has been amazing, and here comes Barzola looking for that take oh, escape by Archuleta. Oh! To the face! Okay, that was a mistake he, right there, because that, he was a down opponent, right? And the referee, didn't call it, so it didn't, allows it's not going to count. Wow. The arm. A lot of energy. 
I am not sure if that kick landed to the head of Barzola, but it definitely was fired at him. It looked like it did. Fantastic opening round between Archuleta and Barzola. And Barzola now bringing it up to the referee. And the referee, I think, says it didn't connect with the head. That's exactly what he said right now. Juan gets position. He gets Barzola up high, comes out, and he throws this kick. Well done by the ref. And it lands on the arm, which is a legal blow and yeah. by Juan Archuleta. That was a great call by Jonathan Romero. He saw that. I had the same thing happen with Robbie Lawler versus Matt Brown. Great job by the referee to call that. And not so great job by Barzola to momentarily take his eye off the ball, as it were, to try to, you know, sell a, a, a legal blow. It was legal. It did not touch his head. A lot to unpack in that first five minutes, and John, you have the unofficial scorecard. Who won that opening round I and have, why? I have Juan Archuleta winning that. He had so many more clean strikes. Now, Barzola had moments when he had the bat, but there was no damage done in that area. Most of it was striking Juan Archuleta 10-9. Barzola trying to track Archuleta. Again, Archuleta trains with the likes of TJ Dillashaw, Cub Swanson, Brian Ortega. Iron sharpens iron, and Archuleta off to a strong and striking start here in this fight, as he promised. He wants this to be a pitched battle in the center of the cage. Barzola says, you know what, I'm going to try to make it a wrestling match. Archuleta defends the takedown and backs away. One of the things you'll see out of Archuleta, if he gets into this where he goes for a takedown, unlike Barzola, Archuleta will disengage to land a shot to hurt his opponent. And Barzola better be careful with that shot attempt as now Archuleta secures the single. Beautiful movement. And goes right to the back. Nice Barzola. job by Barzola to yep. get himself back to his feet. Turns back into him, but the quick burst, the fluid footwork of Juan Archuleta. It's interesting, both of them again, we talk about it, John, you know, a, a knockout loss especially a knockout loss can do wreak havoc with you mentally. And Archuleta talked about what it felt like after. And yet, boy, he went back to the drawing board and so far has come up with a very successful game plan. Yeah, he's looked fantastic right here. But we talk about it, confidence. Confidence is key for a fighter. When you get knocked out, it's like, do I still have it? And he does. You can see it with what he's doing. But he doesn't want to stay in a position where he's giving Enrique free shots with the elbows. There's your takedown. We could try to use that fence to get himself back up. A tenacious Juan Archuleta, now three for four in the takedown department. Barzola can look and say, yeah, well, I thought there was a foul. He just fouled him with what we call a downward elbow, even though I don't think it's a great rule. Archuleta told us he started training camp at 187 pounds and again coming in it's now contract weight 141 but that's an amazing uh, weight cutting regimen and again we, we sometimes realize the sacrifices it makes just to get into the cage and then you've got to deliver. You do and great job by Barzola working hard to get up. These guys are going at an unbelievable, unbelievable pace. pace. Nice job Bob. Archuleta, great. He's work. mixing up his his attack. Well, at least he's letting him know I will take you down. I'll take. I'll get to the point where you think you have a free ride in the stand-up. It ain't gonna happen. I'll put you on the canvas. And Barzola, Barzola looking to tag Archuleta. He made an auspicious Bellator debut, beating former world champion and NCAA Division One champion Darion Caldwell via third round TKO. That was Caldwell's first loss via knockout, and now it's Archuleta changing levels, pinning Barzola to the fence. And that's where you just take a look at what you just talked about. That fight, yeah. Barzola took down an NC NC Division One champion, champion, and it was like, my God, amazing. But like you say, when you get to 
work with the uh, the thoroughbreds at AKA his wrestling coach Abel Herrera. He's been training with Habib Nurmagomedov's team. They know a thing or two about wrestling. Yeah, just a couple. Of <laughs> Archuleta really just sticking to him right now, looking for that movement. It tells him which way he's going to go. Does he try to bring him backside? Trying to drain Close to Bartolo. the single. He's got Iranian lift. Nice job by Archuleta. Right into north-south position. But look at Barzola. Nice escape by Barzola. Amazing. Looking to get back up to his feet. It's in, again, two world-class bantamweights. We're talking about a former champion in Juan Archuleta and Enrique Barzola who wants to well, become Peru's first major MMA champion one day and both of them with designs of maybe eventually perhaps getting back into the Grand Prix with a victory or at least staying in the hunt. Neither guy willing to give an inch. Beautiful job of switching that up by Archuleta. Took a step to the outside. Outstanding movement. And both known for their huge gas tank. So this torrid pace, they can continue it for 15 minutes. Marzolo delivering some elbows as Archuleta determined to try to get it to the ground, but the bell goes to end round two. Saturday, October 29th, Bellator MMA heads back to the beautiful boot with an action-packed card from Milano, Italia. Headlined by BJJ master Adam the Bomb Piccolotti taking on Bellator MMA newcomer Mansoor Barnawi, who is entering the promotion with a stunning 95% finishing rate. In the co-main event, number two ranked middleweight Fabian Edwards faces relentless Charlie Ward. Don't miss Bellator 287 coming up October 29th. Last time I called an Anderson Silva fight, he was on the receiving end of that flying scissor heel hook via Rio Chone and in pride. Silva returns in a boxing match against Jake Paul, but hey, let's talk about the business at hand. What a fantastic fight between Juan Archuleta and Enrique Barzola. Unbelievable as far as the pace that these guys have been putting on. And look at them both. Neither one's breathing hard. It is crazy. And the sign of respect before they renew hostilities here in the third round and immediately. And it's it's almost, and again, Vasily Lomachenko, one of the greatest boxers in the world and is so good at landing combinations at angle, darting in and out. Now, I don't want to say Archuleta's at his, his level, but man, he is showcasing new wrinkles of landing combinations while on the move and at angles. He's never looked better in the stand-up. It's, it's the part right now that, look, in the stand-up, he's dominating this fight. It's when Barzell Zola can get into the grappling situations that Juan is doing well, but he's also accepting damage like those elbows on the ground that he's not doing anything about. You can't just sit there and take and those. There the Beautiful. Shot and the takedown by Juan Archuleta. But Barzola right back, right back to his feet. And this is normally where Juan will disengage. He'll go to land a shot disengaging from his opponent. But you can tell the pressure is kind of giving him a problem. So that's why he is sticking with Barzola right now. And you know Barzola can't be pushed against the cage, but... Nice sweep Ar of the leg to put him back on the mat. And he gets back to the fence. And Archuleta in control from the back has his has Barzola's left arm neutralized. Now the rear waist lock being employed. Great job of hooking the leg, bringing him back down. Barzola right back to his feet. And in the open here, this is where I think Juan Archuleta is winning the fight. He needs to keep this in the open. Use his footwork to minimize the pressure of Barzola. Land those shots, use the footwork, come in inside, get your work done, and then step out. Of course, Archuleta also working with Dwayne Ludwig, one of the more stellar strikers in combat sports during his time. And that uppercut just missed for Archuleta. Two minutes gone in the final round. Archuleta utilizing lateral footwork. Barzola trying to find the range with his combinations. And see, Archuleta at least not 
shooting nakedly, trying to utilize his punches to set up the takedown. This is exactly where he doesn't want to stay. It's okay that you're there, but don't stay there and allow Barzola to start hitting elbows upside your head. Midway point of the final frame. Nice job by Barzola. Great Dick battle. Underhook. Barzola walking forward. Barcelona again closes the distance. They're in the clinch. And we see Barzola utilize a lot of leg kicks in previous battles, unable to really get that going because of the footwork of Barcelona. But a good setup there by Barzola, utilizing the one two. Takes down beautiful switch by Archuleta. Outstanding movement by Archuleta. Right back. These guys, they are so well matched and they do their things, you know, their own little things. Beautiful, nice left hand that landed by Archuleta right there. And beautiful lead right hand that popped Barzola in the face. And they, right there. Great job by Archuleta, but he's going too far back to the fence. And Barzola now seven. trying to unload on Archuleta. Archuleta ducks underneath that sweeping left hook from Barzola. Body kick by Archuleta to the liver. Changes level, searches for the single hammer fist dropped by Barzola. Up again. Go pick, perhaps. <laughs> nope. Yeah. He looked for that Iranian again. Fist and some elbows back to be careful not to the back of the head by Barzola. And that's what Wong cannot sit there and allow to have happen. And back on their feet with just over a minute left. This fight has literally flown by John. Final 60 seconds. It has been an absolute war between these two. They are just back and forth. Barzola now getting a good position. Wong wants to get to his knees. Start to build a base, get himself out of here. 45 seconds Arzola left. Arzola trying to get the hook in. those hooks in, looking for the rear naked choke. 40 seconds left, Barzola. Archuleta coming off his first knockout loss, never been submitted. Well, Barzola looking to bounce back from the first time that he's finished, and he is trying to make this position count, but time is running out. And a very calm Juan Archuleta. He is calm, but he needs to get himself out of this position right now. Turn into his opponent. There you go, just like that. Just that takes his back. And 50. Oh, nice. And an uppercut by Archuleta. Beautiful job. Putting a punctuation mark on this terrific tussle. And the fans at Long Beach Arena approve 15 minutes of world class mixed martial arts. You can't ask for anything more. Those guys were going for it the entire time. That was fantastic. Take a look at right here. This is with having Archuleta's back. Barzola goes to go for that choke, and that's what Archuleta was waiting for. He reverses the position here. From that, again, there's that disengagement. Brings the knee up, wow. lands the knee, goes for the uppercut. Right here. There's the knee, it lands. Uppercut, more of a slap, but still, it connected. Barzola just, like I said, tough as nails. Archuleta saying it was a dog fight and he knew it was going to be and it was that. Juan Archuleta believes he's done more than enough to climb back into the win column. But Enrique Barzola has toughened out as anyone in the Bantamweight division. Tiki Gosen with Juan Archuleta, MMA veteran. All right, let's get the official decision to what was a fantastic start to the main card of Bellator 286. Here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance inside the Bellator cage, we go to your judges' scorecards.
where all three judges, Marcel Varela, Elliot Kelly, and Chris Crail, all have it exactly the same at 30 to 27, all for the winner by unanimous decision, Juan the Spanier. Hard fought victory for Juan Archuleta. Back in the win column, and he snapped the first losing streak of his impressive career. He's standing by with Big John McCarthy. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with your winner, Juan Archuleta, and that was a fast-paced, go-after-it fight. You guys never stop. What was that like for you? Because you had to be going, you got to be kidding me. You're not tired yet? Big John, I know you were tired announcing. I, I heard you take a couple deep breaths when I took a couple deep breaths. But uh, talk about hands of stone. This guy's head was made of stone, man. Hey, first of all, I want to uh, wish a special happy birthday to Hans Mollenkamp. Thank you for all you do for our athletes here at Bellator and Bellator itself. You're a truly amazing person. Thank you, Elijah, all these guys, the Marians. Thank you guys so much. My beautiful family right here, always very supportive. My brother, after 22 years, ARC, he worked in this program, got to see me live. In 23 years, Big John came home and got to experience a life of like, just happiness, you know, coming in here, being free to expose that. That's what I fought for tonight. And I thank you for all my sponsors and Bellator itself for giving me this opportunity tonight to fight here in Long Beach, baby! So can what it do! Hey, on the real, I know it's up in NorCal, but our Poncho Brothers is opening up. October 5th, come by, check it out. We got the pre-rolls for you, what up? All I gotta say is, unbelievable. That was an absolute war, great win. Everyone, get up, put your hands together for Juan, the Spaniard, Archuleta. And Juan Archuleta definitely Thank feeling you. higher than a Thank SoCal you, dispensary you with it. a Thank spirited you. display picking up an important victory over the double tough Enrique Barzola to begin our proceedings here on the main card of Bellator 286. The combat sports community is mourning the loss of a titan in the land of the rising sun. Antonio Inoki, the founder of New Japan Pro Wrestling, trained under legendary Puro Resu star Ricky Dozan and catch wrestling icon Carl Gotch, who was involved in what, well, many believe the spiritual origins of mixed martial arts, a mixed rules fight with Muhammad Ali. You see referee Judo Jean LaBelle, who we recently lost, another combat sports icon. Antonio Inoki, deeply involved in politics, one of the most famous Japanese athletes has passed away at the age of 79. Well, it has been an incredible night so far here at Bellator 286, and things are just getting started. We want to get you ready for our next fight here, and let's take a look at the featherweight rankings. Josh is with me here on the fight desk. Josh, you got Jeremy Kennedy going up against Aaron Pico. Aaron Pico there sitting at three. Mr. Scott Coker was just visiting up with us up here. If Aaron Pico wins, he's saying, Mr. Coker, I want a shot at that title after this. Yeah, absolutely. It's so funny because we brought up Aaron Pico and Jeremy Kennedy's fight, and the first thing he did was I want to go back to my seat, which is Cage side. <laughs> I'm going to watch it from over there. Look, Aaron Pico is a phenom. He's a fabulous fighter. He brings a lot to the cage. I'm looking forward to seeing how he does it all tonight. Well, Aaron Pico, we have gotten to know him in the cage, and he continues to stun us each and every fight. Recently, we got to catch up with him at home, though, and we were introduced to a completely different side of Aaron Pico, one filled with tranquility, filled with horses, and while fighting will be his legacy. Here we are, home sweet home, at the Pico Ranch. Horses, I think, calm my mind down. They, de they definitely do. We all know that fighting is a wild sport. It's a brutal sport, and I tend to overthink a lot. So anytime that I'm around them, I'm riding, I have a smile on my face, and I don't think about fighting. I just think about being in the present, being in the moment, 
and um, trying to connect to them. And I treat them well, and they treat me well, so it's good. Yeah, so this is it. This is where I uh, spend most of my time when I'm not training. This is Canelo. This is the first horse I bought after I won my first fight. There's a sport called uh, Rejoneo, which is bullfighting on horseback that they do a lot in Spain. And this type of breed, Andalusians and Lusitanos are bred for that. I always say, once you get the horse itch and when it's in your blood, you can't shake it. I knew that I wanted to be a fighter because I can make money to have horses and now I'm doing it. I think fighting and, and horses are similar in the fact that in order to be a great fighter, it takes time and to have a great horse, you can't rush it. Every day you need to be out here with them and doing a little bit of this and doing a little bit of that. And I mean, I love it and it's my escape, my outlet, and uh, ultimately what I want to do for the rest of my life after fighting. The horses used to get, get all my attention, but uh, now, now I have a greater love in my life. My, uh, my son, Valentino, I call him Bala for short. I can't describe the feeling. It's the best feeling in the world, being a dad and watching him grow every day. He's learning something new. It's just, I don't know. I can't put it into words. I love this guy. Well, I think being a father has changed me because before it's just all about you, 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 and MMA. Now I have a son who I want to grow up and, and do great things and keeps you focused, um, keeps you out of trouble, keeps you, keeps you humbled. Most of all, keeps me um, striving to be a great person. Because at the end of the day, he doesn't care if you're a world champion. He just cares that you're a great father. I'm fortunate to be a uh, part of a, a long generation of Pico men. Uh, praise God that I have my father in my life, my grandfather, and they've always been there to support me. And now we have the latest Pico man, and that's Valentino. And he's the, he's the light of the family. I want to set a good example for him, like my dad did for me, my grandfather. So I have big shoes to fill, but I'm excited to take on this life goal, and that's to be a, a great supporting father. Everything that I do now, I'm doing it for Valen, and um, it's that extra motivation. And the reality is, is this in fighting. The, the more fights you win, the more money you win. And that's just plain and simple. I'm not going to sugarcoat or anything like that. Everything that I have and I own is, is, is for my son. So every fight is crucial. I want to leave a mark in MMA. This is kind of getting deep and I've never really talked about it before, but I have a really bad fear of dying. And I always tell myself, if I can be remembered as one of the greatest fighters that ever walked this earth, I'll live forever. Josh, the world is being introduced over and over again to Aaron Pico, and he is just growing tremendously in this sport. But you've known him for the better part of 10 years. What is his mentality, and how have you seen him evolve? I mean, he's matured so much, just not just as an athlete, but as a person. I mean, and now he has his own son. Look, he's someone that does, he does everything 100%. He's dedicated to whatever it is he's doing, from wrestling to his horses, now to his son. But fighting is a very selfish sport. And I really believe that he's gonna have to give a lot to fighting, but you also can see he wants to bring his son along with everything he does. So that's gonna be interesting to see him do, but if anyone can do it, Aaron Pico is gonna be an amazing father. He's already an amazing fighter. I think it's really interesting because he comes from a wrestling background, but every single fight we've seen him add something new into that repertoire. He said, I think the reason I'm doing so well is because because I know that I don't have all the answers, which leaves him open to changing things. Look at that six fight win streak he has coming into tonight. What do we see from him in order to get the win against Jeremy Kennedy? Well, having a young son, he definitely won't have all the answers, <laughs> but he seems to be having the answers lately inside that cage. And a lot of that is ever since he's been to Jackson Winks. Since he's been at Jackson Winks, he's gotten a lot better at everything he is doing. He's putting the, the fight game together. When he came, he had good boxing. He had great wrestling, but he could he didn't know how to combine the two. Well, now he has learned that. And then now you're seeing the transitions for the rest or for the jiu-jitsu. And then that's leading into all sorts of other areas and avenues. Look, his cardio has always been the the top level in terms of just not just for wrestling, but across the sport. But now he's learned how to put everything together and really break people down and look for him to really try to tear apart Kennedy tonight with the wrestling, the ground and pound, and just the aggressiveness. He ran a half marathon in between his last fight and this one. I mean, he's taking this so seriously. I don't even like to drive in. 13 miles. Let Whatever, no, it. this is a lie. Uh, Josh has like a marathon lined up or something. I'll be sitting on the couch. Okay, let's give Jeremy Kennedy some love here. He told us this week, I have to win the exchanges. I have to make this fight 
fight dirty. Do you agree with that? How does he get the win against a guy like Aaron Pico? Absolutely. Look, from what I've talked to him this week and what you just said, he has the right game plan. The, the other thing is just trying to implement that game plan. He can make it a dirty, grimy fight. He is somebody that is, kind of fights a very similar style to Aaron Pico in terms of he takes people down, he grinds them out, he makes them pay for their mistakes. He does all of those things very well. What he's got to do, though, I feel like for him to win this fight, he's really got to put Aaron Pico on his back foot and make him fight in a position he has never fought before. And that is going backwards. In wrestling, Aaron Pico would always go forward and grind on you and push you. Well, he never took a step back. Well, let's see if, if Kennedy can make him take a step backwards inside that cage and let the hands go and potentially try to get a takedown. That might even offset Aaron Pico's mindset. Hey, wow, I just got taken down. That hasn't happened to me before. Maybe that'll make some changes and that'll start to swing on his favor for Jeremy Kennedy. Just admit it, you had a run scheduled this week, didn't you? I'm not going to it's, it's next week. See, exactly, exactly. Uh, somebody who does not want to run more. I don't know, maybe maybe you do like to run more. We're going to send it back down to you for the next fight. Hey, I run my life like cardio, just not as good as Aaron Pico and Jeremy Kennedy as we get set for this top 10 tussle with title implications. Pico seeks his seventh straight win against the number seven ranked Jeremy Kennedy. Ready now to make his way to the case, Jeremy, J.B.C. Kennedy. J.B.C. has landed in L.B.C., but you know that nickname may not be apropos anymore. J.B.C. No. stands for Junior Bacon Cheeseburger. Mr. Kennedy, an affinity for fast food, but those days, as we mentioned, behind him, just taking a look at him, talking to him this week, without a doubt, the best shape of his career. In fact, he's had two training camps preparing for Pico. They were supposed to meet in April. Just two weeks before the fight, Kennedy fractured his orbital bone. He's made the move from beautiful British Columbia down to Las Vegas, and he knows the task at hand. He knows what Pico brings to the cage, but hey, he's no easy out either, John. <laughs> no, he is not. I have never seen Jeremy Kennedy in such good shape. He looks fantastic. He's got the right mindset. He is ready for this fight. He knows what he's facing, and he is a good wrestler, and he's great in the top position. The real question is, can he put the grind on Aaron Pico? We're going to find out. Well, he put the grind on Emmanuel Sanchez. Big win over the former title challenger in December of last year, and now he gets ready to meet Aaron Pico, and hey, Pico, red hot, had a hot take on one of the hottest divisions in Bellator MMA. When I look at the featherweight division in Bellator, I see talent. I see tough guys that are just craving to be the best in the division. Pitbull wants to stay on top. Forks wants to be champion so bad. Mads Bernal wants to get some losses back and ultimately get to the world championship fight. Look at the whole division, and it's just young killers that are hungry. Yeah, I've got a tough task in front of me. Right now, the most important person is Jeremy Kennedy, and he's no slouch. He's been uh, in some wars. He's fought some of the best fighters that ever stepped in the cage. This guy is, is dangerous, and, and I'm aware of that, but when you're fighting Aaron Pico, I'm gonna come like a tank, and I'm gonna look to maul you. I knock guys unconscious, choke guys out. I ground and pound, it's lethal. The whole division is on notice and know that Aaron Pico is coming. And now, set to make his way, Eric Pico! Aaron Pico walking out to James Brown, super bad, and he has been a super bad man. And hey, he actually rivals the Godfather of Souls, legendary work ethic, one of the most highly touted prospects in MMA history, and even when he began his career in 2017, hey, he was as green as Long Beach, native Snoop Dogg's lungs, but man, you talk about a change of scenery, John, moving to Jackson Wink MMA, the maturation process, turned 26 last week, and I gotta say, just like Kennedy, you hear fighters say, oh, I'm in the best shape of my life all the time. In this case, 
both these athletes tonight, you believe them, because Aaron Pico has put on muscle. He's as fast as he ever has ever been, and as explosive. He's unbelievable. And the thing about Jackson Wink that has been great for Aaron Pico is they have taught him how to have a fighter's mindset. He now knows how to fight. Everyone thinks just because you can use your body, you can fight. Aaron Pico now is a weapon. All right, John, let's uh, go to the 4-1-1 for this pivotal matchup at 145 pounds. You know, there's not much difference here. A little bit in the age and all that stuff. 5'8 to 5'11. Does that height advantage help Jeremy Kennedy? We're going to find out. Here's Michael C. Williams. Bellator MMA moves now to the featherweight division scheduled for three five-minute rounds live on Showtime. We introduce the blue corner at 5 foot 11 weigh him 145 pounds his professional record 17 wins three losses he fights out of las vegas by way of surrey british columbia canada presenting jeremy jbc kennedy and across the cage his adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot eight, weighing in 144.6 pounds on a six fight win streak, and now ranked at number three. He stands with 10 professional victories, three defeats, fighting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. He hails from Whittier, California, introducing Aaron. In charge, Blake Rice. Number three ranked Aaron Pico looking for a seventh straight win. Five of his ten victories have come in the opening round. Jeremy Kennedy turned 30 last month. Three wins via first round Jeremy knockout Ray. or submission. Hi. Let's get it on. I think I just coined a phrase there. Big Fantastic. Job. Keep up with it. And immediately, Pico keeping up with his torrid pace, coming up fast and lands the one-two already oh, he's on Kennedy. Back. You can see Jeremy got a little bit stunned there, had a little bit of a movement. Tells you he got a little bit of a buzz. Pico may be fighting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico now, but Southern California is his home. And there's a elbow, a nice knee by Kennedy on the break, but a nice elbow from Pico on the inside. And Pico already utilizing the jab as a paintbrush. Nice low kick by Kennedy. And you have to love the way that well, Kennedy's responding here with that jab, but Pico defending that takedown, and you knew Kennedy was going to go to the takedown department as soon as possible. Absolutely, and the, the big thing for Kennedy is he needs to continue to go to that because we knew that if Kennedy was able to get a hold of Pico and get him down, Pico is going to get right back to his feet. So it's a matter of Kennedy just saying, that's okay, I'll just continue to ride on you, keep you from damaging me, and start to do damage to you if I can get you to the ground. Both of them have tasted defeat at the hands of Adam Borch, who later tonight will challenge Patricio Pitbull for the featherweight championship. I can't tell you that, sir. A minute and a half elapsed in the first round, and Jeremy Kennedy trying diligently. Oh, some old school foot stomps, trying somehow to take Pico down and there was a moment there as Kennedy had him up against the cage I saw Pico motion to his corner and pointing at his shoulder I don't know what's wrong with it but he's acting like his left shoulder there's a problem with oh he's trying to he's pop trying his shoulder, to pop back, his shoulder in back in you're absolutely right John and he gets taken down by Jeremy Kennedy so an interesting storyline to definitely follow potential injury as Jeremy Kennedy feeding some right hand to Aaron Pico, and again, we cannot even begin to speculate, but obviously Pico in some discomfort. Kennedy hoping to pile it on. There's no doubt that Aaron Pico has a problem with that left shoulder. He was trying to pull it back into, you know, like it's dislocated. It doesn't look like it's dislocated, but it doesn't take a whole lot for that thing to be popped out. And Kennedy looking to take advantage past the midpoint of the opening round. Knee to the side of Pico's head. You know, and Jeremy Kennedy's doing all the right things here. Grind on him. That knee. 
It doesn't matter. Bring all those mat returns are all very important. Every limb is important, but Pico, as he continues to work on that shoulder, he's known for those lethal left hooks to the body, a la, well, the namesake of one of his horses, Canelo, but he is compromised right now, and Kennedy is doing what he needs to do, John. And I don't even think that Kennedy knows that that shoulder is giving Pico a problem. Right now, he's just knowing that, oh, I've got his back, and I'm going to continue to ride on him. And you can see Pico can't even put any weight on the left hand to post. Yeah. His, he's been holding that arm in the same position. Again, I haven't been able to see that it looks like it's out, but he's got such musculature on his delts anyways. Kennedy now looking for the rear naked choke. Pico has been submitted, in fact, in his much ballyhooed debut at Madison Square Garden when he was submitted by Zach Freeman via guillotine choke, but early adversity for Aaron Pico. What Aaron's trying to do right now is he's just trying to make it through the round. He's trying to keep from being damaged and get to this corner where he can hopefully try to pop his shoulder back. Final minute of the opening round. A quick start by Aaron Pico. Seems to have injured his left shoulder. And Jeremy Kennedy now working from the back. Has the body triangle employed. 45 seconds now left in the round. See, and if you're Jeremy Kennedy right here and you're not able to get that, you know, submission because of where you're at, you don't feel like you get the choke, then start opening up with bigger shots. Put a lot of shots on him right now. Try to do some damage. Half a minute remaining. Body triangle still tight, and there's some left hands being delivered to the face of Pico. Now how tough is Aaron Pico to have a possible dislocated and shoulder? You wonder how much of it is in this adrenaline. Fight. And what will happen, what, but you're absolutely right as of right now, and it's going to be interesting to see what transpires after round one in the Aaron Pico corner. And you can tell there is definitely an issue with Pico's left arm. He, I could hear him saying, pop it back in, pop it back in. Yep. Oh, you just saw Brandon Gibson try to pop that thing in. One of his trainers at Jackson Wink, six-gun Brandon Gibson, trying to keep his fighter in the fight. This is incredible, John. And look at him. Brandon Gibson may be a miracle worker. It's so funny. I, I have a friend who's a doctor who's so good at popping these in without hurting anybody. He just rotates it okay, in a certain position. Fine. So listen. Let's listen in. You need to get in close, take this guy down, okay? Yeah, get on him. Here's some water. Oh, it's okay. So we just popped the show back now. Down. Let's get this guy. Okay. You're a great Jackson way. issuing let's instructions. Go, go. They're still pulling on it. Well, Pico's obviously had to overcome a lot of adversity on his professional MMA journey, and yet he is going to answer okay. the bell for round out. two, and Jeremy Kennedy sees a glaring target. The Jeremy. left arm. Jeremy Kennedy is, is looking at him like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> Let the doctor look at this. Referee telling Pico he's gonna let, he's gonna call for the doctor to look Damn. at his it's arm. Still not calling good. timeout. You can see how Aaron Pico's trying to move it right now. But what does it say about Aaron Pico's intestinal fortitude? Aaron, that's that's not good. Wow, he yeah, desperately wants to fight. No, he can't. You're the doctor. That's Dr. Heart Kelly right here. Heartbreak scene. You have a broken clavicle. It's not separate. It looks like a broken clavicle here. Doctor said he thinks it's a broken clavicle. This is the doctor. We have to listen to him. You tell me. It's not broken clavicle, maybe, is one thing. Broken heart. 
much bigger. That's what he's trying to avoid right here. What, what I can tell you is I've had a broken clavicle. It is not an easy thing to lift your arm. Heartbreak and maybe more but for you, Aaron Pico, but my God, John, the fact that he desperately wanted hey, to continue, and he's break. making that clear to Jeremy Kennedy, and Kennedy knows, too, this is not how he wants to pick up the biggest win of his career, but it will go down as a W for Jeremy Kennedy, and boy, you have to feel for Aaron Pico. We're going to go back to before the injury so you can see if we have it. There's that left where he slips. That's the point right here. You're going to see him look to his corner and actually grab his shoulder. I don't see anything on the posting of the arm, but you, but you can see he's trying to switch his arms as far as switching, there like the pressure off. There he's trying to, he's trying to pop it back as he feels it's out, and then he's looking at his corner and pointing to his shoulder. And he tragic. headed back to get medical attention. You said it, Johnny. A tragic turn of events for one of the. Hottest fighters in the game, but for Jeremy Kennedy, hey, what he did what he needed to do, and, and he will record the victory. The six-fight win streak is over, but for Jeremy Kennedy, he will improve to three and one in Bellator MMA. And let's uh, make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, as a result of an injury, the red corner unable to continue. The fight waved off officially. The time, five minutes, round number one. The winner by TKO, Jeremy JBC Kennedy. Jeremy Kennedy improves to 18 and three and he's going to talk with Big John McCarthy. I'm here with the winner, Jeremy Kennedy. Jerry, Jeremy, you came in here, you had no idea during the fight that he had injured his shoulder, no. and you were just going after him trying to get a, a finish of it. You did an outstanding job of controlling position and everything. Did you at any point in that round know that he was injured? No, I, I, I hit him with a left hook on his way in, and we kind of got into a grappling exchanges, and I, I know his wrestling pedigree, and from a lot of those mat returns, it was kind of feeling easier and easier as the round came on. And I have the, like, you know, I respect Pico. I knew, I was like, maybe something's going on, but I was just going for the kill the whole time, hunting that choke. That's my position. I get your back. When you're trying to get up on the cage, I'm going to mat return you and maul you. And all these people booing, man, it's crazy. But I, I show up, I'm, I'm putting on a fight for you guys, so it's all good. <laughs> He's a hometown boy. I come in the backyards and I fight people in their backyards constantly. I much love California. I love you guys anyways. You can boo away. It's all good. Well, I tell you, coming in against Pico, you knew that your hands were full in the grappling area, but you're a great grappler. Who should it be that you should be fighting next in this cage? Listen, I've been fighting top five every single time. These rankings keep dogging me. I fought Borch, Sanchez, and Pico, all top five. One, two, three. I don't care about the title. Honestly, these guys are all going to be, you know, you got AJ maybe coming back, Pitbull wanting to go down up. I want Pedro's ass in Ireland in February. I've been chasing him for two years. He finally gets a win, and now, he's, now he starts mouthing me off on, on Twitter and whatnot. So guess what, Pedro? I'm coming for your ass now. So we've got a date. we got a place. I'll go in another backyard. Let's go to Ireland. I love it. I'm excited for that. And I'm going to whoop your ass in your backyard. That would sound like a great matchup. Ladies and gentlemen, you have got to give it up for a man that came in here, put on a great show. Congratulate Jeremy Kennedy. Uh -oh. Jeremy Kennedy trains with Mads Burnell at Extreme Couture. Pedro Carvalho in a
his adopted home of Dublin last week, scored the biggest win of his career, defeating Bernal. So yeah, Kennedy looking for some revenge, looking to get it on with Carpaio, maybe in Dublin next February. But tonight, the victory by Kennedy overshadowed by the injury to Aaron Pico. Let's go back to the fight desk. Here is Amanda Gera. Mora, thank you so much here with Josh Thompson. Josh, you went cage side uh, for that, and Aaron Pico right now still backstage trying to figure out exactly what's going on, either whether his shoulder, his clavicle. What did you see unfold in the cage when it comes to his injury? It just looked like his, his shoulder dislocated, and wrestlers have been known to your, your shoulder gets dislocated, and they adjust it into the corner in between rounds for wrestling, and you go back out on the mat and you wrestle. That's what it's all about. I, Big John will probably give more advice on, on, on how this whole thing was handled by the commission and the ref, but he never asked for a timeout. It was never supposed to be stopped. He let the corner handle the situation in the corner. I don't understand why they stopped it, because Aaron Pico was ready to fight. And he, like I said, if he would have called a timeout or pointed at his shoulder and asked for some assistance, then I would understand that. But Aaron Pico is a dog. He, I will continue to say this. He will be back. He will be back even better. This is just a setback, a minor setback. And he, you see him backstage, they're still talking about that arm. I mean, did you have, you said you don't think it should be called, but did you have any concern? I mean, even as the doctor was looking at it, I mean, he was kind of holding it down by his side. I don't I'm not a doctor. I have no idea. This is why I'm asking and you. I'm, I'm not a doctor, I, yeah. but for me, you have to let the fighter fight. The fighter will do what he needs to do. Like, Aaron Pico has been in these situations many of times, whether it's a cut, whether it's a shoulder, whether it's your knee, your foot. I've, I've known guys that have wrestled through national championships with torn ACLs. Wrestlers and fighters, that's what we are bred to do. You have to allow them to do that. And that ref just robbed him of that ability. Now, if you don't went out there and taken a couple big time shots, I can understand a stoppage, but that's not what happened. That wasn't the case, and that fight should have been able to continue on. Let's talk to Big John here. Big John, we want to bring you in. Obviously, you've done plenty of refing in your day from what you saw. And, and keep in mind, there were title implications for this. Aaron Pico, had he won this, he likely would have faced the winner between our main event tonight. From your opinion, you're down there. What did you see? First off, I don't think that this harmed Aaron Pico as far as the loss itself. Yes, he lost, but he lost based upon an injury to him. I I understand what Josh is saying, and Josh has got the, the mentality of the fighter, the same mentality that you saw Aaron Pico have inside that cage. But the real thing is, when you see a guy going back to his corner, dragging his arm, then you see his corner trying to pop the arm, the referee is mandated to bring a doctor in to look at the fighter. The referee looked at him and said, son, you have a broken clavicle. And Pico said, I can fight on. It really doesn't matter at that point. Once he has that broken bone, in the doctor's opinion, they're not going to let him continue on. This has, you know, I, I know it's crushing to Aaron Pico. I don't think it puts him back in any way. It puts him back in time, but that's why they brought an end to the fight. Yeah, see, there's a lot of things that you were privy to in the information that I was, and I was sitting cage side without my earbuds in, listening to what was going on. You're hearing that there was something broken. We're all hearing on the side, I'm saying with the fans, because I'm a fan myself, and they're telling me that his shoulder's dislocated. So if that's the case and it was broken, and that's the situation, the doctor went in there and reviewed that, then I would understand that. But from where I was sitting and what we were all being told from outside, don't listen to us fans, obviously, is that <laughs> is is that it was a popped out shoulder. He tried to put it back in. He was kind of able to get it adjusted a little bit. It was supposed to be able to continue to fight. Yeah, he's saying that the end of the clavicle is broken at the end. It either came out of the setting or it's broken. So either yeah, way, it's, Amanda, it's the right thing to Amanda make the Amanda brought on John. I want to make sure everyone understands this at home is that Amanda said to start off this conversation was there was title implications on the line. Commissions, and this is where John and I, we do agree, commissions and refs, they don't worry about that. They worry about the fighter's safety. And from my point of view, I was like, look, if it's a dislocated shoulder, let the man carry on. Yeah. But a broken clavicle is a different story. Exactly. Big John, Josh, we appreciate you guys. Uh, getting the perspective from both sides here, we, we do this at breakfast, we do this at every meal, and John will explain what he's seeing from one side and Josh from the other. Let's continue on here. The weather outside might be cooling down, but that means we are heating up at Bellator. More title fights on the way and the continuation of the Bantamweight World Grand Prix. Pre, here's what we've got coming up. This fall, Bellator MMA is bringing the noise. Let's go!
It's a return to Milan, Italy on October 29th when Adam Piccolotti takes on Bellator newcomer Monsoir Varnari and the assassin Fabian Edwards battles SBG brawler Charlie Ward. Then November 18th, the Windy City of Chicago will host the highly anticipated conclusion of the light heavyweight World Grand Prix with a title clash between champion Vadim Nemkov and number one ranked Corey Overtime Anderson. Plus lightweight top dog Patriki Pitbull defends his belt against unbeaten Usman Nurmagomedov. And finally, on December 9th in Mohegan Sun Arena, it's the semifinals of the Bantamweight World Grand Prix, featuring Patchy Mix versus Magomed Magomedov in a battle between interim champ Rafion Stotts and the trash-talking Danny Sabatello. It's an action-packed fall season of Bellator MMA. Up next, the crowd is about to be on its feet. The true homecoming for the guy on your left there, A.J. McKee, the former featherweight champ. He has fought all over the world. He has won the $1 million, but never has he fought at home inside the Long Beach Arena. But it will be a battle. McKee moving up in weight class to lightweight for the first time in his career, going up against the man on the right there, one of the grittiest guys in MMA, Spike Carlisle. Tonight, we will see A.J. McKee inside the cage here inside the Long Beach Arena. But just down the block, just outside these doors is where he grew up, fighting in alleyways, living the Long Beach lifestyle, one that molded him and never went away. My first true passion was actually cars. and Furious. It's a lifestyle, man. Southern California, the car scene. Chevy gang gang. Long Beach is everything to me. It's a part of me. P&G's Fish Market, world famous VIP records. I used to come to this liquor store and buy swishers with my brother's ID. Man, it's literally been embedded in me since I was a kid. I think the first time I went to Jalisco Tacos, I had to have been about six years old. The first body shop ever was three doors down. 911 sauce. He calls it 911 for a reason. I've enjoyed that sauce since I was a kid, so, you know, it's like going back home. So this is uh, Long Beach Poly, the Academy of Achievers and Leaders. I'll tell you one thing. He, he told us that he was going to kick ass, and that's pretty much what he did. It's a great place, man. It's got its highs and its lows, but that's just like anything else in life. He is the new and now three-time Bellator Featherweight World Champion, Patricio! I've always been a mentally strong person, and suffering that loss, like, it did something different to me. It put me in a real bad place, and just being able to bounce back from it, like, it's something I, I, I've been speaking out on a lot lately. Being able to come to my city, come to Long Beach, California, and, and put on a great show for my friends, my family, and being able to go out there and put on for the city, that's a big key for me, man. I get done with school, and we walk down this alley. Bam! And this is where we used to fight, man. Crazy to think for me, from going from fighting in an alley. It's like we had our own little street arena. People would gather up on the stairs, second, third story, from the streets to the arena. Now, like, I'm in the Long Beach Arena itself. Bam. This is where it will all be going down. We are here. We have made it. Ah! Terrifying knockout from AJ McKee. The growth that we've made within ourselves and the sport. It's time to show up and show out. This new chapter, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. 155 pounds, man. Well, it's time to get busy. It's time to get that work. I'm ready for a fight. Like I continuously say, bigger. Better. Let's go, speed. Faster. Stronger. We're just gonna keep grinding. It's faster, stronger, bigger, better. There's the tap and the victory for AJ McKee. Spike, man. I've known Spike for a while. He's come around. He's a California kid. We've always had eyes on each other. There's no hard feelings, no bad blood. For me, there's always got to be a little animosity. Coming off my first loss, that's all the bad blood I need right there. I think 
The loss was maybe just the fire that I needed to be, be amped up a little bit more. This fight is personal. Not so much with my opponent. Personal for me. Going in there and getting back to doing what I do, man. And those highlight real finishes. AJ McKee putting a lot on his own shoulders going into this fight tonight. Josh, I, I think it's so funny to hear him say we've made it here at the Long Beach Arena. He has fought all over the world. He's won a million dollars. Do you remember when you were fighting your first big fight in San Jose? I mean, what did that feel like for you? What is this going to feel like for him? There's a lot of stress that goes along with it. There's a lot of anticipation that comes up with it your camp is not the same your family your friends everyone is bugging you throughout the week throughout the, the training camp he's got to put all that aside he's got to realize this is his path now to another million dollars to try and get into that lightweight world grand prix next year this is the beginning stage this is the first step is getting that win over spike carlisle so let's talk about what happened with aj mckee inside the cage tonight against a guy like spark Car spike carlisle here he's moving up in weight we're not sure how that weight's going to affect him if it's going to give him more power if it's going to slow him down a little bit what do you want to see from aj mckee tonight I want to see the same AJ McKee I've seen at 145. I just want to see it translate to 155. Look, he's got power. He's got speed. But I think the way he beats Spike Carlisle is he gets Spike Carlisle to react off of his speed, and then he shoots in and get the easy takedown. If he has to work really hard for the takedown, he shouldn't be trying to force it because he is the better athlete. He is the better fighter in terms of he's got more tools to beat Spike Carlisle. What he's got to do is slow Spike down so that in the second and the third round that Spike can't get after him and start putting pressure and making him carry that extra weight. I also feel that AJ McKee on the ground is extremely dangerous with his long limbs. He's really quick on snatching up those arms, snatching up those triangles. And I think if he's going to get the submission or the knockout win, he's going to have to do it in quick transitions. I, that's the way he gets it done. Let's talk about Spike Carlisle here. Uh, he goes by the Alpha Ginger. He has another nickname. It's the Crucifixion. And, and I want to make sure I got this right here. He says, so I can crucify my opponent's demons when I fight them. That is terrifying to me. Uh, that would be terrifying if I were an opponent of his. But you talked about all the tools that AJ McKee has. So Spike Carlisle, how does he combat that tonight? Look, after his last fight, I call him the redheaded ninja. He's called him the ginger. That's what I call God. him. <laughs> Look, uh, uh, for me, honestly, he is somebody that will be there in the, in the second and the third round. He will be pushing the pace. He may not be the prettiest fighter in terms of the way he fights, but he is very well-rounded. He's got six wins by submissions, seven wins by knockout of his 13 wins. He is a gritty, grimy, dirty fighter. And what I mean by that is he will get on you, he will hang on you. AJ McKee's got to make sure he keeps his back off the fence. And if I'm Spike Carlisle, I've got to be in his face and make him fight a, a very uncomfortable fight every step of the way. What was that nickname? How'd you do it? Because nobody could see you on camera. You're off camera. The redheaded ninja. We call him the ginger. <laughs> Moro, save me from this. Save our viewers. Let's send it down to you. Gladly, Miss Geta. And hey, we've got another barn burner on tap. It's going to be AJ McKee against Spike Carlisle. McKee's debut at 155. Carlisle has never been knocked out or submitted. Ready now to make his way to the cage, Spike, the Alpha Ginger Carlisle. Well, Spike <laughs> Carlisle, Alpha Ginger Mania running wild in LBC. Hey, he believes dearly, strong faith, so he'll gladly Say, say your prayers and take your vitamins, brother. But the real American Spike Carlisle on a roll has won five straight with a whopping five finishes during that span. And a man with a deep faith in God channeled his inner Lazarus. In Lazarus in his Bellator debut, one of the biggest comebacks in Bellator history, putting Dan Moret to sleep. Here's a guy in Carlisle, gallons of guts and kettlebell size. Oh, this. 
<laughs> yes, sir. I always say you gotta you gotta make an entrance that people remember. Oh, there it was. Yeah, but I just love that, but his last fight against Dan Murray, he did so many things in that fight that just showed the toughness of who he is as a fighter, as a person. No give up. He was exhausted. He came into that, taking that fight last minute, exhausted from what he put out, and then ends up getting the submission win, putting Dan Murray, a good grappler, to sleep with a rear naked choke. This guy's got no give up, he's got no quit, and A.J. McKee has definitely got his hands full. Spike Carlisle continues to live the dream. He wanted to fight in Japan, and in his last fight, Verizon in April of this year defeated Koji Takeda for a guillotine choke. That's his second consecutive technical submission, so back-to-back -back fights in which he's put his opponents to sleep, and he would love to well record the major upset here tonight. A guy, again, we talk about the fact, has no quit in him. And against A.J. McKee, another tough exam. But while Carlisle may have missed weight, find 20% of his purse. He says, you know, that's the first time that's happened to him. He's a professional. He took umbrage with the scale. Hey, we all take umbrage with the scale. I always take umbrage with scale. <laughs> but here's a guy who's undefeated at 155. And, and John, he's... He's a showman, he's a wild man, he's an entertainer, but tonight, he has to deliver the fight of his life. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the mercenary A.J. You know what? Spooky season is here. And tonight, he tries to exercise the demon that was the first defeat of his career. And John, he did not take that first loss well. He told us he had a full mental breakdown, went into the depths of depression. But guess what? He talked about it. He reached out. He's been very public about it. And the more we normalize the conversations pertaining to mental illness, the quicker we will smash the stigma. Tonight, he's looking to smash Spike Carlisle and get back on the winning track. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you take a look at the, the strength that it takes to be able to go to people and put that out there. That says a lot about the maturity now of A.J. McKee. Look, A.J. as a fighter is phenomenal. There's no doubt about it. He's got all the tools. It's all about his intensity in becoming better. And when he gets into that cage, he cannot leave it in the judge's hands. When you look at that last fight, there was more than he could have done. And he needs to prove that tonight against Mike Carlisle. He made it rain during his entrance. He hopes to be money in this fight as he puts the rubber match with Pitbull on the back burner. Rubber meets the road for McKee in a new weight class as we go to the tail of the tape for Bellator 286's co-main event. You know, not a lot of different things here, but 73.5 to 71.5. I'm pointing that out because most of the time, AJ has a sizable reach advantage. This time, it's not that big. Here is Michael C. Williams. Live on Showtime, Bellator MMA now features tonight's co-main event set for three five-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing first, the blue corner. At 5'8", weighing in 156.6 pounds, riding five straight wins. He enters with 14 professional victories, three defeats from Del Mar, California, Spike, the Alpha Ginger. And across the cage, his adversary tonight fights out of the red corner at 5 foot 10, weighing in 155.8 pounds, making the much anticipated move up to the lightweight. The former featherweight champion stands near perfect as a professional. 18 victories, just one 
So he's got to just settle down, start doing the things that you do well. More apropos words were never spoken by a fighter. Carlisle says, quote, controlled chaos is my style. He's bringing the chaos to A.J. McKee here. From top position, delivering some ground and pound. McKee on his back. And yeah, we've seen McKee overcome adversity in the past against Brian Moore, even against Pat Curran, but facing early adversity here against Spike Carlisle. Absolutely, you know, Spike Carlisle really doing a good Spike job of controlling position here. Came after him, the wrestling, AJ's gonna feel like he's the better wrestler. Carlisle did a great job of switching positions on him. And right now, Spike Carlisle looking really good. Carlisle said his biggest strength, the ability to exploit his opponent's weaknesses, be able to adapt to any situation. The crowd trying to rally A.J. McKee. Well, it's funny because we've seen A.J. McKee come across the cage in that same manner. Yeah, in certain fights. Patrick Pitbull, yeah. Patricia Pitbull in the rematch. So from now on, he's going to yeah, that's going to be me from now on. But for Spike Carlisle, really, I mean, he did what he needed to do. With Beautiful him. reversal. By A.J. McKee. He's going to hold that position. Carlisle gets back to his feet. What a scrappy start. Some great grappling. Incredible scrambles. And Spike Carlisle and A.J. McKee putting on a show. Spike needs to, he's too low on A.J. right now. A.J. is going to be able to turn on him. Yep. And right into full mount. Will McKee make it count? No. Does have the back, but he doesn't have the choke right now. He's got the figure four in place. Carlisle's 18th professional fight has never been finished. Final minute of the opening round. It's on the mouth. Spike trying to turn inside of that. 
He needs to put that foot to the ground. McKee's got the hooks in, trying to flatten Carlisle, but Carlisle is just a beast in terms of trying to finish him. And McKee now patient, trying to position the arm properly, but Carlisle defending so well, John. Carlisle right back, back in the top position. position. Incredible. He is just, he has no idea of how to quit. Eventful opening five. Nice elbow. Elbows yeah. from McKee on the bottom. Good stuff through five minutes. Here's the start. Real speed looking. Carl comes out and then goes after him again. Big shot with the right hand. Throws the kick up high. He is all over AJ here. Both of them just winging shots. AJ trying to get space. He gets a flying knee. Unbelievable start to the fight. You got to love when you see this. You know, Spike Carlisle fell in love with the MMA, watching Pride Fighting Championships when he was 15. He, he kind of throws his offense like a Pride Vander, like Silva, winging those shots so it's not a lot of regard for defense. Look at the end of this round. This is the elbows right in here. Wow. You saw AJ land a couple of beautiful oh, right there. It was an outstanding elbow. Big shots. I don't know if it was enough to make up the round. I think I'm going to have to give that to Spike Carlisle. Wow. Right there. A scintillating start to the penultimate matchup. The crowd alive with anticipation of what's to come here in the middle round. Head kick by McKee. And it landed. Half kick by Carlisle. Another kick by McKee as he walks down Carlisle. Spinning attack misses. Lead right hand by Carlisle. Counter by McKee catches. Carlisle with the left and the right. Big shots by AJ. But look at Carlisle, John. Nice wizard by McKee to stop that. And McKee now looking for the takedown. Carlisle putting his weight on McKee's neck. Just frenetic action. And really, this is the type of fight Carlisle wants. He wants to keep it crazy. He does want to keep it crazy. He's a guy that you know never been stopped, and this is the reason why. He doesn't know how. He just keeps going until finally he finds a way to win. AJ needs to use that technique that he's so good with right here. Take your time, get your hooks in, and work for your submission. Or do do ground and pound and do damage. McKee is tied with Patricio Pitbull and Michael Chandler for most finishes in Bellator history with 13. It's going to be a tough task trying to finish Spike Carlisle, but he's in good position here. I can hear AJ's father, Antonio, say, don't try to submit him. Beat him up. Beat him up here, and that's what he's going to try to do. He's trying to get his arm free because Spike is a guy that he's very hard to submit. He just has that durability. So, oh, now he's got the arm under. No, and again, it's not underneath. John slips no. back to the mouth. And that's why his dad's saying, do damage, beat him up. His father, Antonio McKee, second. So, Mc AJ, a second generation fighter. They actually fought together on a Bellator card. Great job by Spike to turn himself out of that rear naked choke. And the, and the whole thing behind what Antonio, his father, is telling him is if you can degrade him, you, you break him down by damaging him, you'll get that submission. A.J. McKee known for his incredible improvisational skills, being able to adjust the fly and create magic out of, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just the air. But, I, I mean, he is in tough, and, and this is his first fight at a new weight class coming off the first loss, a loss that debilitated him mentally for a long period of time. But there, die plumb knee and the punch on the break by McKee. Great job by Carl to get back up. Oh, but he gets clocked again, spun around with that punch. McKee now snatches the neck. Hey, look, you want to and he says that front headlocks his bread and butter. Antonio needs to look towards that Dars. He's in an anaconda right now. Looking to roll. He's got seven submission wins, including two guillotine chokes. And he does have an anaconda choke on his resume. 
And now just trying to right wear now, down Carlisle. Right now he's got an anaconda choke on Carlisle's neck. And it's a matter of he's taking his time right now. He's just biding his time, holding on the position, looking to be able to have that moment where he can turn to try to crush the space on Carlisle. Carlisle knows where he's at. He knows exactly what's going on. And that's why he's staying straight with him here. Yes, there's pressure. But it's not going to be enough to put him out. AJ is saying that Carlisle is holding his gloves. And now McKee delivering some knees to the body. Just over a minute remaining in the second. Oh, Poop. Could be switching to Peruvian. Peruvian necktie. Yep. And Carlisle again looking Pulls to escape north south back into side control by McKee. Beautiful movement. Into the. Half guard, but Carlisle again not accepting his position, trying desperately to keep McKee at bay. Half a butterfly hook in by Carlisle, who is being, his tank is being taxed. He's tough as teak, has had pacing issues, but as we mentioned, John, what we saw against Dan Moret, unbelievable. And here now in tough against A.J. McKee, who well faced his own adversity in that first five minutes. And that that fight between Moret that went into the third yes. round. So this is getting close with oh, 15 okay. seconds away. Carlisle. And some ground and pound from McKee. <laughs> Ten minutes of terrific action here at the Long Beach Arena. Stop, stop. <sighs> Can't wait for the next episode. The problem is you're getting your hips too high, you're too loose. I need you to tighten up your pressure. The reason why he's able right. to answer you is tighten because up your you're pressure. just throwing that. And Set up with your hands, hand. okay? Spike. Take a look right here. This is that right left hand that just banks. And then the left hook following it right on the chin of Spike Carlisle. AJ really going after him in this. Nice combo. Carlisle with a big swing and the miss comes back with the left. And then this anaconda choke, really what happened is he was unable to be able to turn. He wants to roll with him. That's why it's called the anaconda. It's not only the lock, it's the roll like a snake is winding you up. But he lands a couple of really good knees to the body. And in my opinion, both fighters need this last round. Incredible. Crowd here is amped. A.J. McKee, Spike Carlisle, round three, and Carlisle immediately explodes out of his corner, lands a right. Kick check, there's a spinning back kick that just misses for McKee. And the pace continues. And a torque one here as Carlisle again being battered and bruised by McKee, but still valiantly trying to fight back. Gets caught with that left from McKee. Carlisle's exhausted. Yes, he is. Yeah. And yet he continues to throw, yep. just like he did against Dan Moret. So if you're A.J. McKee, you need to settle down, take your time, pick your shots, put him in bad positions here. Nice job by Carlisle to try to switch it. Great job by A.J. to hold on to that. Into side control. McKee four for four in the takedown department. And these uh, elbows from side control. I think we got a cut from that elbow. Spike Carlisle with a laceration now. And that's always like these beautifully done by AJ when you're talking about push down on the head slide the hand off and crash that elbow he's doing it a perfect and job gave attempt by Carlisle wanting to use the fence to his advantage somehow but good weight distribution positioning by AJ McKee another elbow to the midsection now north south position McKee looking to maybe take the bit. Nope, setting that was him up. Nice job. You can scoop now, up that leg. Looking for the guillotine. And Carlisle, though, so active. 
to not giving AJ McKee any Arla. easy time of it by any stretch. Arla used a beautiful no. elevator hook to back to his way. And Carlisle trying to stay on his feet, but gets taken down again by the dogged determination of A.J. McKee. And McKee again looking for the choke. Continues to batter the head of Spike Carlisle. Carlisle neutralizing the right arm of A.J. McKee for the time being, just past the midway point of the final round. With his body position, A.J. should not be grabbing hold of that choke. Use those strikes, putting him back on the mat. Nice job by A.J. Beautiful elbow strike. Spike Carlisle is ungodly tough. He has taken a ton of shots here. He is exhausted and he is staying in this fight. There's a reason he's never been finished. Oh, yes, there is. But under two minutes remaining, and Carlisle still trying to. Now that guillotine. Now McKee going for the guillotine choke. This could burn his arms, though. Right now, you see how Spike is pushing down on that left side of the arm. He won the featherweight championship, stealing a page out of Patricio Pitbull's playbook with a guillotine choke. Pitbull to defend the featherweight title against Adam Borch in tonight's main event. A bloody Spike Carlisle gets his head out. The blood, the sweat, making it very tough to sink in a submission. Again, nice elbow strike from underneath by AJ. AJ being able to stop. Wow, and nice. Carlisle taking the back and looking for the rear neck control. Incredible display of guts and determination by Spike Carlisle. Hey, now McKee looking hold. for the toehold. Looking for the submission. Under a minute left in this fight. He's extend that leg out. And it's now that he puts pressure on him. So <laughs> calm under fire, it's incredible. What a battle. And McKee looking to go with the full mount. Nope, north-south position again. Right now, A.J. McKee is going, what is this guy made of? <laughs> Somebody checks by Carlisle's DNA. 30 seconds left, and A.J. McKee in his maiden voyage at 155 pounds has utilized his wrestling, has displayed some of that proficient striking, but boy, oh boy, Spike Carlisle is teak tough and the crowd chanting AJ. What has been a yeah, he's going for it. Play going for it, but Todd under the chin has run out. Wow. What a fight. Halloween has come early. Just look at the face of Spike Carlisle, who survived. treatment by A.J. McKee, and he had his moments. More than a few, John. Oh, absolutely. I had him winning the first round. He had a great fight. He just, I think that all that excessive movement, that energy, it drained the gas tank a little too much. And for A.J. McKee, bouncing back from his first career win, we don't know the judges' scores, but what impressed you the most about his performance tonight for A.J.? Uh, you know, I, I look at it and I say, man, once he settled down, he had a great performance. When he was met with that rush by Spike Carlo, you are fighting another man's fight. Don't do that. Take a look at what happened here. Here was the start. They were just going after each other. <laughs> Rock this is suck em, baby. This is called, this is that back alley in Long Beach that AJ was talking about. They went at it, and you could see that AJ got a little bit, oh, really, you want to do this? Don't bring emotion into it. Spike Carlisle turning the position. AJ staying with that figure four. Just so many things back and forth, both guys. But wow. once AJ McKee settled down into the fight, he was obviously the guy with the better technique. He's the smoother fighter, but man, I'll tell you what, I will watch Spike Carlisle yeah. fight anytime. You know, we, we saw both of them display their tricks, but what a treat for everyone watching here tonight, John. No quit, even right here, you know, going, almost had the guillotine choke at the end, still stayed tough. 
Look at this right at the end. Here was the rear naked choke. Spike Carlisle trying to pull that hand oh, down. Blood just squirting out. Squirting out. It doesn't get any better. Incredible. Incredible display of heart. We talked about the fact that he has gallons of guts in those kettle sized cojones, but Spike Carlisle does survive the full 15 minutes again. It's one of the best in the sport. AJ McKee moving up to 155. Let's see if it's a successful homecoming. Let's go to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, after three non-stop rounds of action, we go to your three judges at cage side. Your first judge, Chris Crail, scores the fight 29 to 26. Judge Elliot Kelly, 30 to 26. Judge Derek Cleary, 30 to 27. All have it for the winner by unanimous decision. The AJ McKee, now 1-0 at 155. He faced a very tough individual in Spike Carlisle. Let's go to Big John. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with your winner, AJ McKee. And AJ, that fight started off a lot faster than I know you thought it would. You tried to respond in that and almost fell into his game. What were you thinking? Honestly, I was supposed to get after him quick and easy like that, but he came at me and it took a little... Uh, self-reflection a little adjustment but uh you know that's what the mercenary does once you settled down especially into the second and third round and started fighting the way that you know how to fight with all that technique what was it that was keeping you from being able to get that final submission that you were going after uh he was a bit strong i ain't even gonna lie to you that's a big boy right there but <laughs> let me tell you now <laughs> but uh hats off to him man he brought the fight he was strong um, this is my first fight at 55s, uh, and I'm liking it, you know? I feel a bit stronger, a bit better. Um, it's just back to drum board. Keep learning, keep growing. Are you feeling better about that weight as far as not having to cut like you did before and now just working your way into this 155? Um, for me, it's all motivation, man, and that belt's always the goal, so if I ain't got a title shot, I ain't going back to 45s. Scott Coker came out just recently saying in 2023 there is a lightweight Grand Prix. You've already won one Grand Prix and put a million dollars in the bank. You gonna go for number two? Ain't nothing like a two-timer. You already know. Catching them M's, baby! Let's go, Screw Beach! Ladies and gentlemen, get on your feet and give it up for A.J. McKee! A.J. McKee smoked a spike Carlisle like a swisher, but just like every other opponent Carlisle's faced, McKee unable to put him away, but does enough, dominating his way to a victory at 155. And boy, got to catch our breath, and let's go back to uh, Amanda Guerra. We'll take it from here, Mora. Yeah, you and Big John catch your breath. Uh, Amanda Guerra, Josh Johnson with you here on the fight. Yes, Josh, after AJ McKee's last fight against Pitbull, and he lost. It went five rounds, but he said, you know what? I learned my lesson. He said, I still had some left in the tank there in that fifth round. I'm not going to make that mistake again. We didn't see that from him tonight. And also, you do agree with Big John with the way that it began, and AJ had to get things under control. Yeah, absolutely. I was yelling at you. We were going back to <laughs> You were hitting me every time AJ McKee was doing something, and it really just came down to I was really concerned when the fight started that way that he was going to continue to fight that way. I would have liked to have seen him circle back to the center, compose, What's slow up, the pace of the fight down, but what he also did was he got the back, he had the figure four locked in, he was able to control the mount position, he slowed the fight pace down in those grappling positions, and that's exactly what I was looking forward to him doing. I want that let me know what his fight IQ was. These little steps, even though he's 19 and 0 or 20 and 0, like, these are the things that are important to me because as he gets to the upper echelon of 155 pounders, he's going to have to know when to slow the pace down and when to increase the pace. And then now with this lightweight World Grand Prix coming up, there's a lot of top level guys in there that he's going to have to learn to slow him down. How does he fit into that division right now with what you saw from him? We didn't know moving up. We didn't know what he was going to look like. We had an idea. What do you think of what we saw? I, mean, I really believe the weight cut was getting to him. And mentally, it starts to wear on you every time you step in that sauna or anytime you step in that bath, you're thinking to yourself, I don't want to do this again. Why am I doing this? And so I think now at 55, he's comfortable. He looked good in that third round. And that's what I wanted to see, how he looked in that third round physically. 
He had a lot of energy, a lot of pep in his step, and he finished hard. Hell of a fight for both these guys, and got to give it up to Spike Carlisle. The man will not quit. Up next, we have our main event. It's been a great night so far, but we have the champ, the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in Bellator, Patricio Pitbull, putting his featherweight belt on the line versus the kid, Adam Borich. Pitbull told us he made it clear in his last fight with AJ McKee that he is the best, but he wants to keep proving that time and time again. Borich, younger, he's fast, he's five inches taller, he said, I don't know what round it's going to be in, but I will get the finish tonight. I will knock him out or submit him. We do want to mention so much of what he does is for his country. He says, before I go out there, I will be listening to Hungarian music. That is when I turn in to a Hungarian warrior. I want to become the first Hungarian MMA world champ. It is time to get ready for our main event with our guys here. We're going to go cage side and bring in Big John here along with Josh Thompson. Uh, John, Moro needed to catch his breath. Like, how are you doing down there? Is your heart rate calming down? I've had, I've had to do heart palpitations on him. He's going crazy down here. It's it, been outstanding. It has been a great night, and we still have our main event. So we are going to give each of you a say here. Josh, I'm going to start with you. I know Big John doesn't like that. Don't yell at me, John. I don't make the rules here. Josh, talk to us about the champ, Patricio Pitbull, and what he has going going into tonight. Well, it's only fitting that the former champ, myself, <clears throat> okay, talks about the current champ, Patricio Pitbull. Look, John, on our show this week, we talked about this fight on our Weighing In podcast, and we said Adam Borch has all the tools, which I agree with you. He's tall, he's long, he's lanky, okay, he's fast. And you said the one thing that he has, and I quote, is he will jab Patricio's face off. Well, I want to remind you with these highlights that I'm about to pull up. Producer highlights, let's bring these things up. <laughs> Pedro Cabal tried to tried to jab his face off. He hit him with the overhand right, jumped to the arm and guillotine, tried to finish that fight. Beautifully done. Michael Chandler going up in weight class, tried to hit him with the jab. He slipped on the inside, came over the top, and finished Michael Chandler to become the double champ champ. My question to you is how does Adam Boric get it done by jabbing his face off, like you said, against someone who is obviously a great counter striker. Oh, the best part is that I get to talk to a former champ and tell him about fighting and make him understand that <laughs> different fighters are different things. Look, Adam Borch is a different animal than anybody that you put on there. Way faster, way stronger, way bigger. So when you're talking about his ability to use his size and his length and use the jab, he fights everything off of the jab. He doesn't throw ones. He throws ones, two, three, fours. He's got flying knees. He's got kicks. Adam Borch is a guy that is a dynamic fighter and explosive throughout every round. Now, I'm not saying that Patricio is not fantastic. He is, and he always finds a way. But he has never fought anybody that is the same as Adam Borch, and it's going to show. I want to put some highlights on Adam Borch here and give you an idea of what Adam Borch can do. Because, see, Adam Borch, when we talk about someone that can really put it on someone, this guy is phenomenal. His flying knee knockouts. Take a look against Aaron Pico, and he finishes. This is what makes this kid so good. Unbelievably strong. Here he goes, Pat Curran. And if you're going to look at this, Patricio Pitbull fought Pat Curran two times. Both of them went the five rounds, and he lost one of them. Adam Borch puts him away in the second round. He is a different breed of fighter. He's the new breed. And I'm not saying that Patricio again is not fantastic, but this new breed of fighter fights at any range he wants. Look at the range here. Elbow, knee, comes up with the, everything you want to see out of a guy. Down, up, all over the place. Adam Borch is a handful. Obviously, Patricio's a champ, but he's going to have his hand, hands full tonight. John, let me stop you, okay? You've carried on long enough with this nonsense. Let me just tell you directly, okay? Adam Borch is absolutely all of those things that you said, but I told you this in our show, is that he cannot afford to stand directly in front of Patricio Pitbull with the power and the counter and the way that he counters. He cannot afford to do that. He's not going to do that. Out. You're right, he's not gonna do that. He's gonna move, and he's gonna go in and out, and he's gonna control distance, which Patricio is great at, 
move, but he's not going to be able to do it the same way against Adam Borch. I guess we'll find out. We you know, will. John, I was going to compliment you and say, you know, John, I, I love having you in this segment because I need somebody else to give me a hard time. We have a script here for a reason, John. I oh. was supposed to ask you a question. I'm sorry. And you went big time. Say, Mr. Producer, I need you to roll the highlights as well. Uh, look, we've covered both sides of it, guys. It's going to be a great fight either way. It is time for our main event. I'm going to take over right now. Both of you are going to step aside. The Hungarian warrior versus the man with the biggest target on his back in Bellator. It's time. Over the course of the past dozen years, Patricio Pitbull's litany of accomplishments under the Bellator banner has underscored why he is considered one of the top mixed martial artists in the world. He gave fans a glimpse of what was to come with a dazzling debut at Bellator 15. There's the tap and that's it. And they've been hooked ever since. The three-time featherweight champion, former lightweight kingpin, and the promotion's pound-for-pound -pound best has rewritten the record book and cemented his status as the face of Bellator MMA. When I started my career, I was like a boy. <laughs> And now I am like an old man. Bellator is my home. I am Bellator. After the most high profile and disappointing defeat of his career to AJ McKee. He is seriously hurt. Pitbull redeemed himself in the rematch with a unanimous decision victory to regain the belt. When I beat AJ, I take my belt back, but he doesn't stop to talk. I know he's gonna face each other again, so fuck him. Like Pitbull, Adam Borch's Bellator career began in spectacular fashion, with a first round finish in front of his hometown fans in his native Hungary. It was one of my best feelings in my life, you know, fighting at home, Everybody was cheering me. It was a big pressure on me, you know, because I know it. If I win that fight, I can get a contract. I can move to the U.S. I can change my life. Riding a four-fight winning streak, Boric has evolved from phenom to world title challenger. This is the right time for me. I'm 29. I'm on my prime. And I'm just telling you guys, this is just a beginning of my career. While the fighter nicknamed The Kid is confident, the man at the top of the division feels his reign as featherweight top dog will continue. Adam is a great kickboxer. He has good takedown defense, nice jiu-jitsu, but I am better than him in all aspect of MMA. I have a big respect for Patricio Pitbull. He's a legend, but I think his prime is done. It's time to bring a new generation, and I am part of the new generation. Oh, my God. He don't know me. Everybody talk big and thinks they can beat me. When they face me in the cage, they see the cage. And Patricio Pitbull has climbed the mountain again. Two proud fighters who have come of age in the Bellator cage. One, the revered title holder, ready to repel the next challenge. The other, a worthy contender, looking to dethrone the king and become the first ever Hungarian MMA world champion. I think he's a little bit underestimated me, but he's gonna be surprised. I'm gonna take that bet home. I'm still the best fighter ever in the And tonight, I keep my crown. He had a dream that he would become the biggest Hungarian MMA star ever. And here we are, 13 years later, where tonight he fights not only for himself, but for that flag, his native Hungary. And he has a chance to make history by becoming the first Hungarian MMA world 
champion and John coming off what was his technical masterpiece against Matt Burnell. First time he goes five full rounds preparing for this championship fight. He continues to grow and evolve as a mixed martial artist and really the timing for him could be better for this title opportunity. Well, I always say the time that you stop growing or you stop learning is the time you need to get out. And he has, and you talk to guys like Henry who who is his trainer, he says, when I first held Pats for him, I knew the kid was special. Six years later, oh my God, it's so much more. He is an unbelievable fighter with a ton of talent. His keys to victory for this fight is that jab. Jab, 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 jab him to death if you can. Combinations that you throw, always finish those off with your kicks. Low, medium, and high. Just get after it. Superlative striking, some of the most dynamic flying knees you will see in MMA, but he's also working on his wrestling through cross-training efforts with guys like Logan Storley and Michael Chandler at Kill Cliff FC. And, uh, man, if you can hang with wrestling studs like that, you're doing a good thing. Yeah, and it's the coaching of Kami Barzini that he gives a ton of credit to for his wrestling prowess. And there he's, he's practicing some he shots. <laughs> Patricio Pitbull other than he is a winner. This guy is unbelievably smart as a fighter when he gets in the cage. He used to be a guy that had a chip on his shoulder and he sometimes made mistakes. He learned to get rid of all of that. He fights calm, he fights smart, and when he wants to explode, he's got power and he goes after people. His keys to victory for this fight, the body attack. He needs to go to the body early and often and make him pay for the flying attacks that he will sometimes do, those flying knees, make him pay for every one of them. The first four-time champion in Bellator MMA history, Patricio Pitbull about to embark on a record third reign at 145 pounds, was surprised by his brother, Patricky, who showed up here in Long Beach this week. It was expected that he would stay in Brazil, training for his upcoming lightweight title defense against the undefeated Usman Nurmagomedov. He surprised Patricio. Patricio says, with my brother Patricky in the corner, there he is, I can't lose. There you go. Our tape for this fight, you could look at the records, all of that stuff, 35 to 29, but a 65.5 compared to a 70.5, that's a sizable reach advantage for Adam Borch. It's time to once again go to the maestro on the microphone, Michael C. Williams. Bellador MMA Live on Showtime from Long Beach Arena. The time has come here in Southern California for the main event of the evening. Five five-minute rounds for the Bellador Featherweight World Championship. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, Commissioner Peter Villegas, Chair at Cape Side. Executive Officer, Mr. Andy Foster. 
And now, introducing first, the blue corner. At five foot 11, weighing in 145 pounds even in his first world title challenge, the number two ranked featherweight brings an impressive professional record of 18 victories, just one loss, hailing from again Hungary. He fights out of Deerfield Beach, Florida, presenting the challenger, the kid, And across the cage, the champion fights out of the red corner at five foot six, weighing in 144.6 pounds. The two division four time world champion holds an unparalleled professional record, including 33 victories, five defeats from uh, Natal Rio Grande do Norte Brasil. Ladies and gentlemen, the defending three time Bellator featherweight world champion, Patricia. The referee in charge, Jason Herzog. Okay, final sign for the rules on the back. There were no final questions from you, Blue. There were no final questions from you, Red. I've already touched gloves, come out ready to fight. Main event, Bellator 286. With the Bellator MMA featherweight belt up for grabs, Patricio Pitbull has 12 first round finishes. Adam Boric, three of his four knockouts have been via flying Bro, knee. Buddy, you ready? You ready? Look for it early. The bell and round one scheduled for five five minute rounds with the featherweight crown on the line. One of the things about Patricio that is so impressive is you'll see that he, he likes to control the center of the cage, but he manages distance very well. For a guy that doesn't have a big reach, he moves his feet very well to get out of the range and to get himself in the range. There's that long left hand that scored for Adam Butch. And again, Patricio Pitbull. It's another jab, splits the guard, does Boric, but Patricio Pitbull, a, a cage general, you talk about it, John, just has altered his style and trained it smarter, not necessarily harder, nearly two decades at the highest level of the sport, and has become a very effective counter striker, and there's Boric bringing the fight to the champion and managing to score with the one-two. He's he's very quick, is Adam Boric. Yeah, well, after that last fight with how fast it started, all the fans want this one to start as fast. Well, this guy's got to go five rounds. And it's also Patricio Pitbull in the Long Beach Arena, the home of A.J. McGee. They're not going to be cheering him regardless. Uh, Patricio knows how to fight a five-round fight. He starts off very smart. He gets his, his tells. He sees what his opponent's going to do, and he slowly starts to break down what the opponent's done. Borch needs to, to really get on his game and start to make Patricio have to think a lot. Give him a lot of different looks and a lot of things that he has to deal with. The more that he has to deal with, the better the fight's going to go for Adam. Both very effective kickers, a good exchange between them, and there's that jumping knee countered by Pitbull. And Pitbull immediately pounces on Adam Borch. High risk, high reward, but the risk not paying off for Borch there, and in fact, it may be Pitbull now looking for the reward. This is what I was talking about with those keys to victory. When he does those flying attacks, make him pay. This is one of those instances right here. But it speaks to Borch's confidence that he's able to continue to try to land these dynamic strikes, just missing very, that knee. Well, and very similar to Andre Arlovsky fighting Fedor and Milkenko. Oh, when he went swimming Patricio, upstream? Patricio Pitbull landed that shot right on the jawline of Borch when he was up in the air. Didn't Arlovsky look like he was a sand swimming upstream when he got knocked out by Fedor? And there, Pitbull! Ends up with Borch again on his back, and quickly, that's one thing about Pitbull. When he smells blood in the water, when he lands a scoring blow, he immediately tries to go for the finish. Absolutely, he is a finisher, there's no doubt. If he can get somebody hurt, he does not let them off the line. 23 of his 33 victories have come inside the distance, 11 knockouts, 12 submissions. 
And Barge now on his back. Trying to control the posture of the champion. Pitbull wide base, looking to try to break the guard. Pitbull looking to slice through that yep. guard right there. He's, wants to go to slow mount, but well defended by Borch. But this has started out very well for Pitbull. This is exactly the kind of start that he does, and just it just starts to snowball on his opponents. And it's not a bad thing that Borch is actually staying in this guard position because he got hit with a couple of shots. I think they rung his bell. A minute left in the first round, and the referee will bring them back to their feet. And it's the distance. There's that jab that Borch put on display very effectively against Mads Burnell in his last fight. You see what I was talking about with Pitbull. You saw how he managed the distance, got himself out of there to the point where Borge couldn't throw any combinations. He's too far away. And there Pitbull in that combination landed the right low kick executed by Borge. And there Pitbull not averse to going the flying knee route. Oh, nice right hand by Pitbull. He's got a devastating right hand, but also a nasty left. Good start for the featherweight champion. Here was that flying. Knee. Look at that left hook right on the button. It definitely hit Borch. Didn't I? Don't think it hurt him that bad, but it was clean. Oh boy! And you can see him going straight down. And then that right hand right at the end of the round. Here was the left. It did not hit, but the right hand does square right down the middle. Didn't do any damage, but it definitely got his attention. If you want to go on the ground, just keep working when you're there, okay? Keep working when you're in that position if you want it. Ready? You ready? Second round underway. Fighters fainting. There's the jab by Borch. And I believe I Borch needs to really get after that jab. Yeah, we Just about keep that. on putting it on him as much as you can because it's going to keep him out of range that he's not going to be comfortable with. that I really think that he needed to do was he needed to use those kicks. He's got a good low calf kick. Bring it up to the thigh, sometimes to the body, even to the head. He has not gone and used his kicks at all. He's more of a boxer here against Pitbull. There's a right hand that lands for the champion a minute gone here in the second stanza. And that's where Pitbull's so good. Those counter strikes. He sees his opponent with the attack, moves himself off the center line, and lands the big counter. Great vision. Pitbull's corner, including his brother, Patricky, and behind Patricky are Eric Albaracin, who's really helped Patricio Pitbull in the wrestling department. There's a jab, good counter by Boric, right, and then flashes the jab. But already blood on the side of Boric's face may be cut. Might be a small cut that's been smeared a little bit. Borch is realizing he cannot make a whole lot of mistakes without Pitbull capitalizing on him. 
getting a little tight with where he's at, but he needs to continue with that jab and those low kicks. There's the low kick, and there's a harder low kick by Pitbull, and gets the better of that striking exchange, pushes Borch back with the jab. If you could see that striking exchange, one of the things you would notice, Borch put his eyes down while Pitbulls were right on the target. Another Brazilian featherweight icon known for hard leg kicks. Jose Aldo recently announcing his retirement. Want to wish him all the best and what a fantastic career. But you're looking at a Brazilian legend in Patricio Pitbull. Well, unbelievable champion in, in Aldo. But if there was one fighter that this man, Pitbull, always said he wanted to fight to prove that he was the best, it was Jose Aldo. by Patricio walking down and there's Borch going for the low kick that was checked by Pitbull and then Pitbull returns a hard leg kick. There's a body kick there, a liver kick by Borch starting to utilize that mode of attack and both of them again well versed in kicks and the counter attacks thereof but the jab from Borch not being utilized as as much as now beginning to work a little more. We saw it again used very effectively in his last fight, and it was one of your keys to victory. He does, he's got a good jab, and it's quick and effective, and it's solid. You know, it, it puts guys back. So you got that's your long range weapon with your hands. Use it. Inside, low kick by Borch. Pitbull trying to get Borch to bite, trying to set up a, another crushing counterattack. Just over a minute left here in the second. One, two by Borch. One of the things that you've seen though with Borch is instead of the one, two, three, fours that we saw in his other fights, that has changed here with Pitbull because he's getting counter and he's just going to one, two. There's the counter again by Pitbull and now has Borch on his back. Borch delivered a series of elbow strikes as he was going down again, though. That impeccable timing and the uh, the tremendous counter attack of Patricio Pitbull. Yeah, and it's, you know, that's just his fight IQ. This is something that it's hard to explain to people that don't understand fighting, but he is so smart inside the cage. He's always in control, and he just picks his moments. Egyenes húzzá a bal térde, csak lépél rá föl. És nyugodtan az összeütések végét, az összeütések végére rámert a könyök. Pont a konsult, ő pont a mano alguma coisa, entendeu? Resposta com mão. Essa sua antecipação no final foi perfeita, pô. Pegar o chute dele, segurar, dar um direto junto, entendeu? Tá perfeito. As we begin round three, John, you have the unofficial scorecard. What does it read after 10 minutes of action in one uh, Unofficially, I have Pitbull up two rounds to none, 10 9 in both rounds. And I thought Adam Borch did better in that second round, but it wasn't enough. Just because he did better than he did in the first round, that's not enough for him to win that round. It was close, but I gave it to Pitbull. Pitbull looking for the takedown and then utilizing that fight IQ, seeing that it's not there, backing away immediately. Nice, nice attempt at the elbow coming across by Borch on that clinch. Borch 
Edge on the front foot, bouncing up and down, feigning, trying to find. There's a high kick blocked by Pitbull, and there's the jumping knee again, countered by Pitbull. It ends with Pitbull on top again, John. This is exactly what we were talking about. Look, he's got those flying attacks, but those can sometimes work against you if the opponent is smart. We know Pitbull's smart, and that is a beautiful takedown by him. It's twice it's happened in this fight thus far. And Pitbull has to achieve full mount. And Borch in peril against the Bellator MMA GOAT. A minute and a half gone in the third. Methodical, very calm and in control. Patricio Pitbull. Irritating Borch with those bell claps. That's what exactly what Borch needs to get those hands on the hips, start pushing him back, start wiggling his legs through. Oh, nice job by Patricio. He kept himself with an oh, arm around the neck, pulling himself in. That kept his legs able to hold on as Borch was trying to slide through. Borch should have moved his hips to one side or the other. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt Patricio Pitbull again with underrated wrestling ability now has Borch on his back from full mount. Needs to try to deliver that ground and pound. Just short strikes here from Pitbull. Because when you're in full mount, you want to make sure you make your opponent pay, John. Well, right now, he's, he's putting a lot of pressure on the abdomen of Adam Borch. He's making him feel his weight. Adam's the one that's being hit with shots here. There's nothing coming Patricio's way. And you saw when Adam made that big movement. That's a big explosion. And when it doesn't work. Oh, elbow from Pitbull. This hard can opener by the champion. And the hip attack while trying to escape. And now Borch gives up his back. Hooks are in. Standing, perhaps a rear naked in the backpack position. Borch coming over towards his corner. with a little bit of a, a head strike there, not legal. Now, Borch is in the position right here. He's got to, he's holding on to the, all of the way to Patricio, so that's tough on his legs, but it's also difficult on Patricio to hold that position with his legs. Pitbull looking for the, the choke, but his right arm being controlled by Adam Borch. Pitbull now back to the mat. Yes. Looking to take Borch down. Nice takedown by Pitbull. And he has his back again. Pitbull now three for four in the takedown department. And again, it's Borch wearing the champion like a backpack. Trying to defend here. Pitbull. And the only thing I would say that with Pitbull, yeah, you're, you're, he's winning the round but he's not doing any type of damage when he's got the ability in the position he's at to possibly do that damage. So now he's coming out of Pitbull's mouth. Pitbull was looking for the takedown, defended by Borch. Borch now fighting for position, has the champion along the fence, delivers a knee to the midsection, one to the inner thigh, another one to the other inner thigh. Borch known for his flying knees, just looking to try to break down the champion along the fence with these knee strikes. to the championship rounds of this featherweight title fight. Hey, right here. He's just moving his head. I got him. I'll warn him right now. He's right there. Here was that flying knee. Comes up with it. Pitbull just slides his head in, grabs hold of the legs, turns the body, and straight down. Beautifully done. That's anticipation. He sees it coming. He sees where the leg's at, turns his head. There go the legs. That's the easiest takedown he'll ever get. Well done. Oh. 
calma, tem calma, é só chutar. Ele vai vir com tudo, ele vai se errar. Ele vai querer Quando jogar errar, joelho e pega. cotovelo agora. Toda hora ele tá ajustando com a oh. perna de trás. Joga lá, Jerry mata a cobra, tá lá. Consciência, consciência. E o pedindo esse bolo no seu vestido lá. Se ele volta de novo, não se preocupe. Obrigado. John, as we begin the championship rounds, I want to get your input on the adjustments that Borch needs to make because he has to be behind on, on the scorecards, at least on your unofficial scorecard. Here. Pitbull's pitching a shutout. So what does he have to do here in these championship rounds? You know, he needs to turn up the heat as far as, but he needs to be very basic in what he's doing. That's Pitbull's so good. You're not going to catch him in those areas where those flying knees are going to work really well for you. So hit that leg, make him start to make the mistake. Hit that leg with a low kick. Jab, jab, jab. Go to the body at times when you can, but you cannot sit there and think that he's going to fall for a flying knee. He's ready. He sees everything. He sees your, your body position, and he sees when you start to... You know, that distance management up. is amazing Made by everything. Pitbull. And then for Pitbull... Pitbull needs to just stick with what he's doing. He's countering very well, and he feels comfortable in there. The one thing that you do see out of Pitbull, his arms are getting heavy. You can see him shaking his arms out all the time, which is telling you the lactic acid is starting to get in there. That might mean that his, you know, the punch is going to come a little slower, not quite so much on it. It's a little heavy. And now Borch finally starting to put a little pressure on the champion, walking for it, but not launching an attack yet. Delivers an inside leg kick. But just single shot. Bellator featherweight champion Patricio Pitbull in the red gloves. The challenger Adam Borch in the blue gloves. Borch with a four fight win streak. And again, we talk about Patricio Pitbull avenge that loss to AJ McKee and becoming a three-time featherweight champion McKee victorious in his lightweight debut against Spike Carlisle and that's the subplot that unfinished business but Patricio Pitbull taking care of business so far here against the challenger I've always said one of, one of the things I believe you need to do if you're going to beat Pitbull is you got to back him up. you got to make him start moving backwards. And you'll notice that Adam Borch in no moment of this fight has had Pitbull really going backwards. Pitbull will step back to reset, but he's always in control of the pace and location where the fight's at. And it is seldom that we have seen Borch put together combinations. A lot of single shots just like that. Low kick doesn't follow up. And again, different, completely different fight. And maybe the respect too much being shown to the champion against Burnell. And we saw Burnell have success as well. But but when we just watched the fight again this week, John, the fluidity, the amount of punches, the way he went up and down, low to high, that's not the case here tonight. No, that's a different opponent. You know, Josh Thompson was the first one to say it. He goes, look, you know, I love what he did against Mads Burnell. And it was fantastic. But he ain't fighting Mads Burnell. He's fighting Patricio Pitbull. And yet he needs that kind of offensive output if he wants to get into this fight. Counter by Pitbull, and again, it, exhibit number one as to why he may not be throwing those combinations as much. That counter attack from the champion. See, Pit, well, the one thing when you're watching Pitbull, especially defensively, he doesn't make mistakes as far as dropping his hands. He brings the, brings the punches back on the same line that they came out most of the time, unless it's an overhand. He just does everything very technically right. Pitbull controlling the center of the cage. 
How rare. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, but impenetrable defense for the most part. And and Borch again also, let's talk about it. He has tried two flying knee attacks both times. Pitbull's taking him down. Right, right there is exactly what I, I want to see Adam Borch do. He threw the, the one, two, and then he came back with the straight jab. That's what he's got to do. That jab landed. It's because Pitbull was not waiting on it. He was waiting on the one, two. And now Borch having a little success, countering of his own, looking to change levels. Pitbull defends. Fifth and final round on deck. Frustration beginning to show for Adam Borch. The rally cry from Boric's corner, you have five effing minutes. Looks like Eric Albaracine looking to monitor Boric's body language in the other corner. There's Borch with the jab. Now, you know, the jab's there, but it's, it's just not hitting him with the snap because of the range. But Pitbull hits a heavy leg kick. Counter right nice there. Nice right hand, and that's stung. You can see it. Final round right here. You good? All right. Pitbull's 15th Bellator title fight, one of his 11 records that he owns or shares it would fight around, fight, are you ready? well maybe you take ready? me the duration fight. of the fifth and final round to go through all of those records as his first title defense of his third reign going according to plan and for adam borch looking to make history he is going to have to deliver something memorable and uh well for him again has has memorable highlight reel finishes on his resume but unable to take off thus far in this fight and adam borch is really going to have to open up here which puts him in a position to be hurt but if he wants to win this fight he's going to have to hit pitbull with a shot that pitbull does not see coming that puts him in a position where he's hurt and borch can go after him clinical effort thus far by patricio pitbull Fede. There's the right hand through the guard, and now three-punch combination culminating with the left hook curling behind the guard of Pitbull. And this is what I'm talking about. If you notice, this is the first time during this fight Pitbull's gone backwards. Yeah, and yet counters with the right. And again, from a fan's point of view, Pitbull doing everything, and yet you expect or want him to start to sit down on his punches more is this exactly what the doctor ordered and he's content to do this throughout the rest of the fight let's just be honest he doesn't have to take big chances he should know that he's way up in this fight or believe it you would hope yeah oh nice three punch combination that culminated with a left uppercut that caught pitbull and there's a right hand by borch that landed and notice what i was talking about when i said he's got to do more than that one two and look at what's happening as he does it's landing oh that hurt him borch that coming and again bit. going for the knee and and now it's pitbull attacking the back so despite the fact that the flying knee strike has been his calling card and one of the reasons he's in this championship fight it has been anything but successful tonight and is costing him dearly against Pitbull. Absolutely. Every time, every time, Pitbull has made him pay for it. Borch needs to take that arm, stick it on the right side of his head, bring it over his head. Tick tock goes the clock. There has to be more of a sense of urgency here. You would think. trying to bring it over right now this is 
you can, you can look at you know, and say they're not doing much. Pitbull doesn't have to. He knows as the time's going by, his win is coming his way. Borch is the one that needs to go after it. Like I said, take a chance. Don't just sit here and let the time. Yeah, it's a minute 45 seconds left in your first world championship right. match. Maybe your lone opportunity at a title. These opportunities don't come easy. And Borch securing a big takedown. The first of the fight for him. And he's got 90 seconds to make it count. That was, nine, that was a nice body lock takedown. He was able to do it based upon the difference in length. He just picked Pitbull straight up. Pitbull was unable to keep his feet on the ground. The first time in this fight that Borch is in top position on the champion and Pitbull controlling the posture and Adam Borch needs to rain down as many punches as possible, but the champion doing a good job of controlling the Borch, trying to move to side control. He's in half guard now. Yeah, you're sitting there saying all that, but not an easy thing to no, do. No, it's not easy, but you... A guy that's a black belt we've Brazilian been here years and he knows years what he's done. doing. How many times have we heard fighters, oh, I should have done more in the final minutes of the round. Oh, I should have done this. This is it for Adam Borch. And Pitbull's back on his feet. Pitbull looking for that Kimura for a grip. Man, he's done, he's done a lot of work being attached to Borch's body. And it's under a half minute, John. And Pitbull looking to... Man, that would be Step something. Out of pressure on that would be man. something. He's gonna step over it, roll over it. Adam Borch's dreams have been dashed by the best to do it in that Bellator MMA, Patricio Pitbull. You know, at the start of this, we talked about those keys to victory. One of the things, make him pay for all of those flying attacks. That's what he just did right there. That big shot with the left hook, that hurt him. Then he catches him in the air and puts him on the ground and controls him for the rest of the round. Every time Adam Borch left his feet for that flying knee, Patricio Pitbull made him pay. And that's why there's no doubt that Patricio Pitbull is the winner of this fight. All right, while we await the official decision, why don't you watch this? Hey, Bellator Nation, follow us across a large array of digital platforms and stay up to date on everything you need to know. Like us on the Bellator Facebook page and see exclusive videos. Follow us and get instant updates on Twitter at Bellator MMA and get a chance to have your tweet live on the broadcast. See amazing pictures on Instagram at Bellator MMA. Join Bellator Nation today. It's in my veins that I feel it. Look in my eyes, there's no way to conceal it. Pressure is pumping, it's coming, it's bubbling. Feel the earth shaking, the stomp of a hundred men catching that contact. Prepare for that combat. And we are done. It's where it begins, that everything in that game that you win. Back race for the The new Bellator MMA app is here. New look, new features, new fights. Watch live weigh-ins and prelims. Share your fight picks. Earn points and badges as you rank up to the heavyweight division. And stay up to date on events, rankings, and news. For all the latest features, download the new Bellator MMA app. Available on the App Store and Google Play. From the gym to the streets, Bellator fans head to bellatorshop.com and gear up in the same apparel the fighters wear. Back at Long Beach Arena, 
And Michael C. Williams has the official decision for tonight's main event, the featherweight championship up for grabs. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance in this world title fight, we go now to your three judges. Your first judge, Marcel Varela, scores the fight 48 to 47. Your second judge, Chris Crail, scores the fight 49 to 46. Your third and final judge, Derek Cleary, 50 to 45. All have it for the winner by unanimous decision. And still, Bellator featherweight world champion, Patricio Pitbull. Patricio Pitbull being hoisted up in the air as makes another successful title defense. His wife, Teresa, his sons, Davi and Miguel, enjoying their father's handiwork as the poster boy for Bellator MMA records another victory. Just another night at the office, John, for Patricio Pitbull. Standing here with the featherweight champion of the world, defended that title again. Patricio, every time someone comes in here, you put on a great defense. What is it that we should expect from you at this point? Why are you bullying me? I'm the fuck champion. I'm the fucking GOAT. Fuck you, everyone. You are the best that's ever worn that belt. There's no doubt about it. If you, at this point, looking at what you've done, you've talked about dropping down to 135. Is that actually a possibility, something you want to do? Hey, you know, everyone wants to see a show by the I'm a fighter. I'm here to keep going and keep winning. I have a recap for Brazil. Today, Defender a minha bandeira, lutando contra um adversário duro. Amanhã, o nosso Brasil levantará contra a porra do comunismo. Vamos lá, todos os patriotas. Levanta-se e aperta o 22. Jair Bolsonaro, eu tô com você. Valeu. Today, I did my job. I did it for my family. I did it for Brazil. Tomorrow, everybody, let's fight for Brazil. Bolsonaro, 22, 22. Let me ask you this. Who is it that deserves a shot at you next? Who is it that you want to fight? Uh, I was thinking about Aaron Pico, but he dislocated his shoulder, and now I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe I will go down to the Bantaway division and take that belt to me. Sounds good to me. Congratulations on a beautiful performance. Once again, the featherweight champion of the world, Patricio Pitbull. So Patricio Pitbull defends the featherweight title. AJ McKee successful in his comeback after his first loss against Pitbull. Just saying, trilogy hangs in the uh, hangs in the ether there, Amanda Guerra. Absolutely, Moro. Uh, and we're going to speculate here in a second about what could be next for Patricio Pitbull. Josh, just looking at the fight, though, you mentioned going into it, fight IQ, fight IQ. He is the champ for a reason, and we saw that unfold tonight. I just want to point out the fact that, once again, Big John was wrong, and I was right in our face-to-face -face battle and toe in the line, and uh, I'm going to continue to say that I'm always right. Look, let's get back to the fight. The bottom How do you do that first? That Patricio makes some of the best fighters in the world look average. And the reason being is because every time he touches them, they feel the power. They understand his accuracy on top of his accuracy is his timing. Like I have pointed out, off the jab, he countered over the top. The flying knees, he countered with the right hand. He knows what he's doing in there. He's patiently waiting. Sometimes they're not the... That fight maybe was not the most exciting, but guess what? I've seen him knock everybody out before that. So, not every fight is going to be the, the most exciting fight. But at the end of the day, he walked away with the title and the strap wrapped around his waist. Okay, so let's speculate what's next for Patricio Pitbull, or maybe just what you want to see. We all have our own opinion. I mean, there's kind of like three options here, right? Are we looking at Trilogy with A.J. McKee, but A.J. McKee is now at lightweight. He mentioned he was intrigued by Aaron Pico. We hadn't heard Pitbull say that before. Saw Aaron Pico get uh, hurt tonight, but again, that could potentially happen. He mentioned going down to 135. If you could pick what is next for Pitbull, what would it be? 135. 
That's the it. reason why I say that is because there's a lot of top talent down there. You've got Sergio Pettis, you've got Rafian Stotts, you've got Magomed Magomedov. Whoever wins that Bantamweight World Grand Prix, I'd like to see him slide in and fight the winner of that. And the reason being is because there's never been a three division champion in this sport. And I'd like to see Patricio have a shot at being the first. We, every, no matter what happens, so it's going to be. It's history. Yeah, I mean, he's historic. At, at the end of the day, it's about building his legacy. What is best for him and his legacy? And I really believe that that's it. We mentioned Aaron Pico. I do want to mention uh, we checked in with you behind the scenes. He is still at the hospital getting that shoulder potential clavicle injury uh, checked out there. So as soon as we have an update, of course, we'll let you know. Meanwhile, it was a great night here at Bellator 286. Bellator returns Saturday, October 29th from Milan, Italy, with a four-fight card headlined by BJJ master Adam the Bomb Piccolotti facing newcomer Mansoor Tarzan Barnawi. And the co-main number two ranked Fabian Edwards faces the relentless Charlie Ward. Plus, lightweight Saul the Hangman Rogers squares off against the experiment Tim Wilde. And number eight ranked featherweight contender Justin J. Train Gonzalez is in search of his second straight win inside the Bellator cage when he goes toe to toe with Andrew Fisher, who enters the cage on a six fight unbeaten streak, looking for a repeat of his 2020 win in Milan. Do not miss Bellator 287 on October 29th. It was a night filled with fireworks here at Bellator 286 as our fall brawls are underway. Patricio Pitbull still the champ. A lot of speculation as to what is next for him. Taking a look back at what we saw, we begin the night with an all-out war at Long Beach. Juan Archuleta versus Enrique Barzola. The crowd, they couldn't get enough of it. It went the distance, but a unanimous decision for the Spaniard. Ultimately, congratulations to him. Then we had Aaron Pico going up against Jeremy Kennedy in a featherweight bout. But what unfolded, not many of us saw coming. Pico injuring his shoulder. His team trying to pop it back into place. He wanted to go on. The doctor said no. Jeremy Kennedy gets the W there. The co-main event, Long Beach native AJ McKee, his first true homecoming versus Spike Carlisle. McKee, first time in lightweight, explosions right off the bat. It never stopped. It was bloody. Spike Carlisle had never been finished. McKee almost had him. He didn't get the finish, but he did get the win. And his hand raised in front of a hometown crowd. In our main event tonight, the featherweight world championship, the champ Patricio Pipple versus 18-1 Adam Borch. Borch looking to make history, upsetting the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter at Bellator. Flying knees on both sides, the fight going the distance, but the champ leaving no question. And still, the featherweight world champ, Patricio Pipple. That's it for us at Bellator. Have a great night. Beach, California, 
and the Long Beach Arena home to Bellator 286. And yes, we are bringing you bonus coverage of this lightweight matchup that will pit Keone Diggs against Ricardo Sejas. More Ronaldo, Big John McCarthy cage side as just moments ago, Patricio Pitbull defeated Adam Borch to retain the featherweight championship. But now we turn our attention to the lightweights. And again, earlier this week, Bellator President Scott Coker announcing that there will be a $1 million Bellator Lightweight World Grand Prix in 2023. But for 